Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is located in Platte. Since 1980, David has worked with his father, family, and hired men to provide bulls with the best health, management, selection, and genetics to produce a quality product to meet the customer's needs. Mark your calendar for their annual bull sale on the second Saturday of April. Check out their website at pvfcharlet.com or give David Mason a call for more information. Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is a proud supporter of all Black Panther School activities. Remember, U.S. beef, it's what's for dinner. Located in the heart of Mitchell, Blarney's is your one stop for mouthwatering food, refreshing drinks, and your latest sports action. Fans, it's state amateur baseball time, and Blarney's is your pre and post game destination. Whether you're finishing up the early game and need a spot to eat for lunch, or celebrating a late night victory, stop in at Blarney's and keep the party going with cool, refreshing drinks. Blarney's Sports Bar and Grill, a proud supporter of the state amateur baseball tournament. From your innovative attachment solutions provider for over 40 years, MDS Manufacturing. One of a kind. Revolutionary. Game changing. MDS doesn't make the loader. MDS makes the loader better. As the weather warms up, so does our time outside. If you've been putting off your next home project, then Elite Renovations in Platt and Mitchell is ready to help. If you're looking to upgrade or update your roof, siding, windows, doors, and decking, they've got you covered. Interior trim, flooring, cabinets, tile, or drywall, they got the crews. Book a free consultation to discuss your options. Visit their website at EliteReno-SD.com to get started with your summer project. The One Stop in Redfield is a friendly, family-owned business. We carry hot stuff, pizza, sandwiches, and more. Before you take a trip, or if you're just out and about, stop by and fuel up with Sinclair Gasoline from E30 to E85. Use your Dino app for extra savings and your pump and save card for free stuff. Don't forget to visit the automatic car wash for that spotless shine. One Stop in Redfield is a proud supporter of all school sports and activities. Triatel is a telecommunications company that serves over 10 small communities. And just because you live in a small community doesn't mean that you can't get good service. For me, it's really important to be able to work remotely here in the country. If you live in the uh, Triatel service area and you're looking for a good, reliable, high-speed internet connection, we've served our members for 65 years and we're going to be serving you long into the future. Hey farmers, don't have the time or the means to haul your corn to market? Contact Derek or Phil at NewGen Energy. They are receiving corn six days a week and every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. is farmers only haul day. Located in Marion, South Dakota, NewGen Energy also sells distillers and corn oil. Call 605-648-2100 for all your corn needs and check out their website at NewGenMarion.com. That's N-U-G-E-N-Marion.com. A better you starts closer to home with people who understand your way of life and belong to your community. Primary care providers at Horizon Health know you and know how to help you stay well. We're here to keep you healthy and care for you through every stage of life so you can keep doing what you love and make every day a better one. Schedule an appointment at horizonhealthcare.org. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. 
It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Land and Cattle. Here's Cody. Well, it's, it's a really good option to acquire some excellent genetics uh, for affordable price. Uh, it's become really popular. When you first hear about lease bulls, sometimes it may frighten a person. So that this is a different ball game. You know, there's a there's a genetic program behind these bulls. These are bulls that, that have a genetic program and really are designed genetically to very nice calves. Call 1-800-548-BULL. At Lesterville Feed and Grain, they pride themselves on offering top-notch products at competitive prices. Whether you're looking for feed for your livestock or grains for your crops, they have you covered. And with their market bids, you can rest easy knowing you're getting the best deal possible. But it's not just about the products, it's about the service. Their knowledgeable staff is there to help answer any questions you may have and provide expert advice to help you succeed in your farming endeavors. Shields All Sports Store is your one stop for everything outdoors with local experts eager to guide you through the widest selection of brands. Your one stop for exercise gear to get working out or fashions for going out. And your one stop for footwear in your size, your style, yours to take home today. Shields, employee owned, community minded and like no place you've ever shopped before. Dr. Kelly Tobin and staff at Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic are proud supporters of high school athletics. When it comes to large and small animal health, look to Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. They understand how important your livestock is to you and will give you service that you can depend on. Call 539-1040. That's 539-1040. Rolling Hills is located on Dakota Avenue across from Farm Bureau in Wessington Springs. Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. The heart of farming season is coming up, and Kayton International is your KHIH dealer in Crofton, Nebraska. Kayton International offers top-notch parts and service to keep your equipment running smoothly all season long. Their team of experts is there to help with any maintenance or repairs you may need, so you can focus on what you do best, farming. And don't forget to check out their website for the latest deals and promotions. Whether you're in the market for a new piece of equipment or just need some replacement parts, Kayton International has you covered. We travel in packs, fearless first-timers and go-getters, sightseers and mudslingers, trail conquerors and adrenaline junkies. We believe great rides deserve great company. And wherever the ride takes us, there's always room for one more. Experience the enduring legacy of Castlewood Farms Elevator, a farmer-owned cooperative that has served the ag community for more than a century. Dedicated to enhancing efficiency and offering superior services, they provide a comprehensive range of crop nutrition, protection products, commercial fertilizer, and livestock feed. Visit CastlewoodElevator.com or give them a call today. Your ultimate destination for agriculture needs is Castlewood Farmers Elevator. Discover a piece of Americana at Cones Corner, a renowned 1920s rural gas station turned firearm haven in the upper Midwest. Since 2004, the updated store has preserved nostalgia with gas pumps and snacks for travelers alongside a selection of 2,500 firearms. Purchase in-store or through Charlie for global delivery. They buy single guns, entire collections, and offer trades. Whether you're a collector or looking to sell, they've got you covered. Cones Corner, proud sponsor of Castlewood Youth Athletics and Events. At Heartland State Bank, our customers are at the center of everything we do. Heartland State Bank is a family-owned community bank and here for you. We have an experienced lending staff for fast, local decisions. Heartland State Bank offers competitive rates and is proud to provide uptown services with a hometown touch. With four locations in Redfield, Tulare, Westington, and Highmore, we aspire to support the communities we live and work in. 
Heartland State Bank, member FDIC. It may seem like the smallest town in South Dakota, so how could it have everything you need when you may find yourself in the middle of nowhere? But at Canova Service Center, whatever you may need in the middle of nowhere, that's where they are. Fencing, lumber yard, hardware, oil changes, tire sales, and repair. Rental equipment, feed bunks, cattle shelters, convenience store, and more. So no, you're not in the middle of nowhere. It's the Canova Service Center. We're your local one-stop shop. This is Angela, owner and operator of Amcota Farm and Home Center. From the DIYers, fixer-uppers, to contractors, we have what you need to get the job done. Building supplies, Valspar paint, and tools. Crystal X tubs, fencing supplies, and bog boots for your farm needs. We know how busy life can get. We offer delivery to make your life easier. Amcota Farm and Home Center on Dakota Avenue in Westington Springs. Big city value. If you love being outside, solving problems, and working with your hands, apply now at James Valley Landscape Solutions. James Valley offers on-the-job training in all aspects of the green industry with modern equipment and technology and competitive pay. Benefits include overtime pay, health care, dental, vision, and more. Apply now at jamesvalleylandscape.com or in person at 600 West Spruce, in Mitchell. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator is a proud supporter of the Mount Vernon Mustangs at the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator has been servicing the Mount Vernon area for over 75 years. See them for your agronomy and feed needs no matter the farming season. They will take care of all your grain handling needs as well. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator would like to wish the Mustangs and all the teams best of luck at the state tournament. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union insurance agent today. Each family's needs are different and special. Will Funeral Chapel will listen with sensitivity, answer all questions, and respect your choices. The Will Funeral Chapel staff can assist you in planning and coordinating all the details. They will explain all the different options to make you feel at ease and most comfortable with all the decisions. Find out more by visiting their website at willfuneralchapel.com. Their sincerest hope is that you and your family will be comforted by their efforts. Are you in need of high quality lumber for your next project? Looking for top notch agronomy services to keep your crops thriving? Need a reliable source of propane and fuel for your home or business? Look no further than Tabor Lumber Co-op. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIY enthusiast, Tabor Lumber Co-op has everything you need to get the job done right. And with their competitive prices and top-notch customer service, you'll be glad you chose Tabor Lumber Co-op for all your lumber, propane, and agronomy services. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family-owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years' experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800-KILL-BUGS. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platt, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at farmcosd.com. FarmCo, feeding, feeding your, your future. future. 
Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek in Howard, and Valley Station in Armour are your 100% locally owned team of agronomy experts. We offer Agronomy 365, which provides info in real time to make decisions that result in better, more profitable farming. We know you and your operation with service beyond compare. Get a jump on spring planning with Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek in Howard, and Valley Station in Armour. We are ag done right, the American way. Bank West is rooted in South Dakota. Committed to local success. Just like you. We're all connected. In South Dakota. For South Dakota. Convenient, connected, committed. Bank West. CNB is proud to support our local farmers. Rooted in agriculture, we are committed to our customers. You can shop local with CNB, your John Deere dealer, providing you with new and used equipment, parts on hand, and service all year round. Our entire inventory is available to you online at DeerEquipment.com. CNB, proud to be your local John Deere dealer. Live Ticket TV continues to grow and bring you more sports coverage than ever before. And now, Live Ticket TV is happy to announce their partnership into college athletics with Dakota Wesleyan University. That's right, Tiger Nation, Live Ticket TV, and DWU have teamed up to bring you coverage of all home sporting activities for the Tigers. If you'd like to advertise during these sporting events, give Live Ticket TV a call. Dakota Wesleyan University Sports, now on Live Ticket TV. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the South Dakota Amateur Baseball Tournament here at Cadwell Park in Mitchell, South Dakota. You get the Brock and Bro show this morning. Brock Greenfield, the commissioner, and myself, Jody Brozick of LiveTicket.tv, bringing you coverage of game number three, game number one of day two. This is the Lake Norton Lakers versus the Dimmick Emery Raptors. Going to go through starting lineups and kind of how these teams got here right now. You can see they're announcing the Lakers. Brock, or uh, Truck, pull up your magic here and we'll roll through this. The Lake Norton Lakers come in with a record of 12-3 and three on the season. You know Coach Burt Toulson very, very well. Uh, very dangerous team. They came through District 1, the Eastern Dakota Rep number 1. Defeating Ramona 7-2. Castlewood 2-1. They lost to a very good Millbank team 7-3 to, to qualify for the state tournament. No messing around today. We'll get to that here in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at their opponent, the Dimmick Emery Raptors. They come in with a record of 16-12 out of the Sunshine League. They are coached by Brad Barcher. A little bigger tournament play to get here. They... Uh, Defeated Mount Vernon 7-2, good quality win. Lost in the semifinals to the Winter Club Pheasants 9-4. Then dropped a game to the Corsica Horned Frogs, allowing Corsica to become a state qualifier for the first time since 2019. Had to battle back, took a lump from Alexandria 9-1 before they finally punched that ticket with a victory over the Mudcats of Parkston 11-5 to qualify. We'll get to starting lineups here in just a minute as we will have our national anthem. Brock will be, the commissioner is the play-by-play -play guy. I'm just going to sit back and follow along. You're getting the B <laughs> team today. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the A team. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
Back here at Cadwell, this is the Brock and Bro Show for Game 3. Brock Greenfield, the commissioner, will be on play-by-play. -play. Myself, Jody Brozik, just along for the ride. A little color here once, once in a while, but let's go ahead and get to starting lineups. Let's uh, take a look at the Shields starting lineups. Don't forget, Shields carries world-class brands and back every product they carry with the Shields guarantee. You can feel confident knowing you're purchasing the same footwear, apparel, and gear professionals rely on. First... The home team on this, oh no, this is the visiting team on the schedule. The lineup today, it's going to be Jackson Nome getting the start as the leadoff hitter. He'll be playing center field, Jesse Van Over, Overbeck, or B Beck, Beck, it is Beck. Designated hitter for pitcher Jordan Johnson. Van Overbeck actually nursing a hamstring. He normally is on the field, but today he's going to serve as the DH. Cameron Thru will bat third and catch. Josh Cleveland, the shortstop, is their cleanup hitter. Dawson Nome will bat fifth and play third base. Noah Pitts, Pitts is going to be the left fielder batting sixth. Mick Toulson will bat seventh and play first base. Kevin Crum, the second baseman, is your eight hitter. And Trevor Thuey will be the right fielder, rounding things out in that number nine spot. Jordan Johnson will serve as the pitcher today for the Lakers. No surprise there. Jordan coming off a very good season once again. And last year he had one of the very outstanding state tournaments. Uh, picked up a couple wins. I think, if I remember right, Lake Norton, they won their first two games by a combined total of 3-0. to zero. Uh, Jordan threw complete game shutouts in both. And then he relieved in the third game and didn't give up any in about two and then two thirds of, of relief. But anyway. You know what I think about when I think of Jordan Johnson, that game against the Pheasants a couple years ago, threw a gem. And it was a, it was a kid from Corsica Stickney that cost him the game. <laughs> Not one of the winter clone Pheasants. It was ap actually Bamberg, I believe, that oh, had yeah. that clutch hit to defeat the Lakers. Otherwise, right. they were golden. For Dimmick Emery, the Raptors will lead off Drew Kitchens. He's the shortstop. Peyton Nash is the center fielder. Jason Schmidt, third baseman. Phil Johnson, again, no surprise. He's on the mound. Sam Pischke is the second baseman. Colton Plagman is the catcher. Josh Inquist, the right fielder. Doug Sudbeck at first base. And Chase Arend in left. So... We're about set. We've had our first pitches. Uh, I know John Larson from Lake Norton threw out the first pitch for them. He's been a mainstay in that community for a long time, very active in baseball, both with the Lakers and with the uh, over 40 teams that went down south for South Dakota for a number of years. Actually, I think he played over 50 and over 60 also, so... The Raptors take the field. Jody, do you want to step away or not? Uh, let's keep her here. Let's go ahead and, first of all, let's recognize again some of the sponsors helping us bring coverage of this Dimmick Emery versus Lake Norden game today. You have Triotel with over 900 miles of fiber optic cable traveling throughout our service area and communities. We provide fast internet speeds, elite television packages, and as always, rel reliable television and telephone service. For the Raptors, Dimmick Cheese. You see their big store every time you're driving oh, by yeah. it? I like it. They're proud to carry a wonderful selection of homemade art, uh, artisanal cheeses. They have feel, uh, feel free to browse our selection of cheese gift boxes, cheese trays, and more on their website at Dimmick Cheese. I look forward to this game we were talking about a little bit beforehand. Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> We're gonna get a shot of something, we're, we're aren't not, we? We're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna use that reference very often, though, because they're not a sponsor. No, they are definitely not. <laughs> How about those that are following along on Game Changer? What's the easiest way to get to Game Changer for the South Dakota Amateur Baseball? <laughs> Good question. I'll, I'll pull it up here on my phone and tell you exactly how to navigate to it. If you go to Game Changer. And you run a search for South Dakota Amateur Baseball State Tournament. And then I've got a couple dashes. Class B. South Dakota, all spelled out, Amateur Baseball State Tournament. 
Class B. We're set to go with first pitch. Phil Johnson delivers, and the first pitch to Jackson Nome is taken for a called strike. And there's a and I fail. quick second pitch and another called strike. Phil is looking like he's going to work in a pretty quick rhythm today. Here's the 0-2, and that plunks Nome. And he's telling him, you come back here, you'd leaned into it. And that's going to get us a little controversy. Uh, there will be a little <laughs> discussion. Right out of the chute. <laughs> I wish I would have looked at the monitor to see that. I, I thought from up here that Jackson probably leaned into it a little bit. Definitely. It was a Definitely. ball. <clears throat> so... You're going to have instant replay access today. You're going to have perfect this live feed going out to you. You've got everything today. Feels a little different. Well, you've really stepped up your game, Jody. You know, you've been doing this now. I think this is your 11th state amateur baseball tournament. Um, it was it was good when it when it got going, but boy, you've made improvements every year, and now you're. Dare I say you're de uh, you're sending out the feed with a professional baseball type? Well, let's clarify. Feed. I'm only as good as those around me. First, it started with the Brock and Bro show. We started adding announcing, and then you start adding in the young youth, the talent that's coming through our school programs. And without their likes and the sales teams, yeah, we're the goal was to be a South Dakota ESPN. I think we're close. Anyhow, what's, back. What's ESPN? I don't know. He let it. He leaned into it again. And uh, Johnson is saying that was a strike. I'm going to take a look. He definitely here it is. Put his elbow into it. Yeah, I don't think that probably caught the plate. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to have a good one here today, Brock. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jackson Noem goes up there and sees eight pitches in the first at bat of the game. Actually, plate appearance, as it were, because he walked, and that's not an at bat. Phil Johnson with a token move over to first base and chases Jackson Noem back. And he's got him leaning this time. And Doug Sudbeck chases him, shows ball a couple times, and that's perfectly executed by. The shortstop, Drew Kitchens. So Jackson Nome going to be plucked at first base. Call it 1-3-6 on the putout. Phil didn't do anything particularly deceptive. I think Jackson just thought, well, he came over here once and he's not going to come over here again. So Jesse Van Overbeck steps in with nobody on and takes first pitch high and in for a ball. And that one's also high. Phil struggling a little bit to find the zone. But again, working in a quick rhythm. I think he'll settle in if history is any indication. Here's the pitch. And that's low and away. Ball three. <clears throat> I think the first time I ever knew Phil was probably in about 08. He was playing for Dimmick back in the day when we went to uh, Westington Springs for a uh, Memorial Day round robin. He's been a mainstay on the Dimmick Emory Raptors team for at least 16, 17 years. Jesse Van Overbeck lines out to Pischke at second base for out number two. I think it was 2010 when they won the whole thing. Well, maybe it was not. Maybe it was 07. He might have been around longer than I'm thinking. Anyway, he was the MVP at the state tournament when they won the whole thing back in Sioux Falls, probably in 07 or 10. Yeah, he's been doing it a while. I don't know for sure when I first saw Phil. I know at one point we took a trip, and me as a pickup player, just helping out Clearfield, and I had to face him. That was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't swung a bat in years, and What? This is Cameron Thuey. He's down in the count oh, or one and two as he fouls that one off. Pitch sequence so far, if you weren't paying attention, first one was a ball and then a 
called strike and now a foul ball for the one and two count. Johnson delivers overhand, more or less a 12-6 curveball and it's fouled off. I just heard over on the side, Phil is 38. I heard that. Definitely been doing it for a good couple centuries. <laughs> or decades. <laughs> oh, yeah, excuse me. I was just distracted. Hey, getting a report here. It's Eric McPeak's birthday today. 8888. Of course it is. <laughs> Happy birthday, Eric. I... I even knew that it was 8-8, eight, eight, but it hadn't registered yet. There's a ball hit up the middle off the pitcher, and that's going to be a base hit. Yeah. Infield hit for Cameron Thuey. So we know what Eric's going to do on his birthday. What's the most important thing for him? On his birthday, what would be the best scenario? Sit on the couch and just well, watch amateur baseball all day? You know, though, Eric's, Eric works at a local grocery store there in Watertown. I'm not going to give them any uh, free publicity, but <laughs> he might have to take a few hours out of his day to check that or to go to work before he comes back. You have a courtesy runner over at first, number oh. 32. J.D. Kirchner, FF. He's a Laker, huh? Now he is, yep. I did not know that. Josh Cleveland is the batter. He's down in the count 0-2, so Phil Johnson, although laboring a little bit here, he's throwing 22 pitches, trying to get out of this unscathed. There goes the runner, and Kirshner's going to coast in there. Ball was, I think he threw it from his knees, didn't he? Yes. Never came out of the crouch. <clears throat> Didn't get a lot on it. So Kirshner now in scoring position, and there's a called third strike. That's going to be a $10 donation to Mitchell Baseball. And, again, they're not a sponsor of ours that I know of, so I won't say by <laughs> who, but that's going to retire the side for Lake Norton. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll head into the bottom of the first, still scoreless, back in 60 seconds. BNS Services LLC is your locally owned repair service center. We specialize in full service automotive, semi trailer, and small engine repair, along with tire services. Repair services range from a simple oil change to sharpening mower blades to a more complicated electrical diagnosis. Located at 38058 South Dakota Highway 34, look for us on the hill heading west out of town. Phone Cody Barber, 605 350 4293, and Arian Schooler, 605 770 9398. BNS Services LLC is a proud sponsor of Westington Springs Spartan. Athletic. Dimmick Cheese has been making handmade artisan cheese for over 90 years and has over 25 flavors of cheese. Stop by the store for sampling of all the cheeses. The store also offers several South Dakota made products. And at the store, find Remedy Brewing on tap. Dimmick Cheese offers gift boxes and fundraisers are available. To find out more, go to the website dimmickdairy.com or call 605 928 3833. And don't forget to check your local grocery store for their premium cheeses and cheese spreads. Dimmick Cheese. You are a dynamite contractor. Your younger brother Gary is a slightly less dynamite contractor, but together you make mom proud. Look at you two, and look at your crew. Brenda the calculator cutler, Bill the drill Robinson, and then there's the new guy. New guy struggles with stairs, and that'll cost you. Lucky for you, you have IMT Business Insurance. Learn more at imtins.com. Be worry-free with IMT. Advanced Sunflower is your locally owned and operated sunflower processing company that buys all types of sunflowers for the edible and bird food industries. They market sunflowers domestically and internationally, so they have a wide range of options to get you the best price for your sunflowers. Most Advanced Sunflower contracts have an act of God clause, so you don't have to worry if Mother Nature takes a toll on your crop. Give Jared or Danny a call to get you the most profit out of your sunflowers. Welcome back to Mitchell, South Dakota. This is the 92nd Annual South Dakota Amateur Baseball Tournament. It is a championship tournament comprised of, what, 32 teams in the B tournament? And the A tournament currently going on this weekend up in Brookings, correct? Yeah, it'll start tomorrow. Two games tomorrow, four on Saturday and two on Sunday. 
They'll have two undefeateds at the end of that weekend, and four others will come to uh, Mitchell in elimination games. Drew Kitchens is at the plate. The first pitch to uh, him by Johnson was a ball. And there's Ooh. ball two. Is that yours? This book? Yep. Johnson sets. Here's the 2-0. And that misses outside. Uncharacteristic. Johnson's usually up in the count. Goes right after guys. Wow. Pitch right down Broadway. Drew Kitchens tries to co coax a four-pitch four walk, but in my opinion, there was no question. That wasn't the old automatic on a borderline pitch. That was a get-me-over strike cut. Letter high. Heart of the plate. Fouled off. Now it's full. Jeepers, I can't believe, Eric. I remember when you turned 18. I remember when you turned 21. Those are big milestones. You're twice as old as you were when you graduated from high school now. And there's a hit batsman. This, this, uh, this half inning started the same as last half inning. Full count and hit batsman. Um. Curious where that got Kitchens because his like reaction, his yeah, and he he peeled off a piece of uh, padding, <laughs> but apparently that must have been around the tricep, and that elbow was exposed because he reacted painfully. Better now is Peyton Nash, the center fielder for the Dimmick Emery Raptors. Here's the pitch. He look shows bunt and That's up the first, bunt. yeah, up the first baseline. Nice play by Johnson to get over there and shuffle it over to McToolson for out number one. But Peyton Nash does his job, sacrificing to move the runner into scoring position. So Drew Kitchen stands on second, and now we head into the heart of the lineup. Jason Schmidt, the third baseman for Dimmick Emery. Jason had a really good sunshine tournament. It was abbreviated because he was traveling with his son in his youth tournaments. He missed a couple games for them, but he pitched a huge game in that final qualifier against the Parkston Mudcats. Called strike. I'm just, you know, up in, up in our district, we had a team that was 0-2 that played in the last chance game and got in. Um, but... Dimmick Emery lost three games in their tournament. It must have been a quadruple elimination. <laughs> Actually, it pitch. is. Johnson. And that ball hugs him inside. One and one the count. Seeing some similarities between Johnson's start and Johnson's start. Yeah. <laughs> Phil started a little slow and got it going late. Phil Johnson waits on deck. Here's the pitch. And that's a called strike. One and two now the count to Jason Schmidt. He batted 333 on the season, the regular season. Some of these batting averages, they all represent what they did during the regular season. As Jody said, he had a good district tournament. It could be could be higher as he shoots this one out into left field. That's, tough. That's Noah Pitts ranging over, but it's gonna get down. Very close to the line, and Noah Pitts fires it in. To he went towards second, and Josh Cleveland's throw, errant. Uh, Jason Schmidt rounded it hard and started to retreat, then thought about moving up, but no, no harm, no foul. It's just a RBI single. And so Jim McEmory has drawn first blood. And as I said, Phil Johnson, now the batter. Looking to help his own cause. On the season, Phil batted 415. He goes up there hacking, and he dribbles that one out to the second baseman. Good effort by both fielders there. 
Absolutely a hit, yeah. That is a classic definition of a C&I single. <laughs> Phil Johnson, we're going to credit him with an with a uh, infield single. Probably doesn't have a lot of those to his credit this year. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> well, they're uncommon. That's what I'm no, saying. No, he normally hits line drives into the gap. That's true. Right? <laughs> Sam Pischke now the batter. Second baseman for the Dimmick Emery Raptors with runners on first and second. Takes the first pitch over the outside corner for a called strike. We're getting our first 605 Sports tidbit here. Jordan Johnson, who's on the mound for the Lakers, is also the head coach of the Sioux Falls Lincoln Patriots that won the Class A high school baseball championships. Here's the pitch, and that's swung on and missed. Pischke batted 317 on the regular season. So that was the 605 Sports tidbit, courtesy of John Acree. He wanted me to say that. Ah. <laughs> Great little tidbit. And if you're a single lady, you can reach him. <laughs> Ball shot out into center field, and they're going to just throw it into the center of the infield, hit the cutoff, and not allow runners to move up. So credit Sam Pischke with an RBI single. Other runners went station to station. Phil stands on second. Pischke at first base. The batter now is Colton Plagman. He's the catcher for the Raptors. Batted 380 on the regular season. Big batting averages for the Dimmick Emery Raptors. Here's the pitch, and that's taken high for a ball. Lifted out into shallow right field. Crumb gives chase, gives way to Trevor Thuey, and he makes the play for out number two. Two outs now here in the bottom of one. You'd think with two across, two men on. Johnson was in maybe deep into the pitch count already. Really not. Dimmick Emery yeah. attacking these first strikes that they're seeing. Josh Inquist, the right fielder, now steps up with runners on first and second. First pitch to him, high and away for ball one. On the season, Inquist batted three, uh, no, 273, yeah, 273. Write that down. There will be a quiz. <laughs> Here's the pitch, and that's high for ball two. Pretty close. Josh Inquist in that Sunshine Baseball Tournament must have thrown, I think I heard 220 plus pitches or 220 plus innings. No, it wouldn't be innings. 100 innings in the Sunshine. Swing I know he was on the mound about every game. <laughs> That's a lot of wear and tear on an arm. Yeah, he threw 220 some pitches in a game. That makes more sense. Here's the pitch, and that's a called strike. Almost the same location as the previous pitch. I'm not questioning it because I did think that the previous one was high, and I thought that that one probably was right there. So Johnson trying to establish the outer bounds of the zone. I look for him to try to work location throughout the day. He's gotten to be a pretty good pitcher, putting it where he wants very often. There's a... Ball fouled into the screen. Two and two the count here. Two down. There's an old saying in baseball, but I'm not going to use it just yet because I overuse it. <laughs> well, you always got to have the first. Let's let it rip. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> Real easy to overuse. <laughs> and that one misses, so the runners will... They should be in motion. They should be. <clears throat> Johnson has been known to throw over. I see Mick is not on the base right now. Is he going to sneak? No, he's not. Here's the pitch. High and away for ball four. 
Jordan Johnson now facing uh, Doug Sudbeck, the wily old veteran with bases loaded. Doug will spray it all over the place. Pretty good hitter, very tough out historically. He has batted 200 on the season, but he's a gamer, and I've seen him come up with some of the biggest hits in Dimmick Emery Raptor baseball in the last 20 years. First pitch called strike, pops out of the mitt of Cameron Thuey, but it didn't get away far enough for runners to even think about advancing. Last night, Sudbeck attending, attending the late game in Parkston attire. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Lifted into foul territory. Dawson Noam ranges over. He's under it, and he makes the play to retire the side. After one complete, the Dimmick Emery Raptors have taken a 2-0 lead. The Lake Norton Lakers will be up when we come back in one minute. A credit card that fits your lifestyle and saves you money. Why would you settle for anything less? A Dakota Land Federal Credit Union Visa will earn travel rewards, 1% cash back, and 9.90% annual percentage rate. The right rate and all the right features puts you right where you want to be. Stop by any convenient branch location or check us out online at dakotalandfcu.com. Dakota Land, federally insured by NCUA. Out here, you learn that to keep growing, you have to keep changing. CHS and the farmers and ranchers we serve know all about change, because together we've changed agriculture. That's why we're the largest farmer-owned cooperative in the country. So farmers own the system they count on, with advantages at every step. From innovative tools that help crops grow, to grain processing expertise, to energy solutions, we create connections to empower agriculture. Learn more at chsinc.com. Burke Livestock Auction is a family-owned livestock marketing center in Burke, South Dakota. We are located in South Central part of the state. Cattle sales are held weekly on Saturdays with approximately 65,000 of South Central South Dakota and North Central Nebraska's finest feeder and breeding cattle marketed annually. Mark your calendar for our September 21st fall calf and yearling sale. Sale starts at 9.30 with lunch to start at 11. Burke Livestock is a proud supporter of state amateur baseball. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. One pitch, one out there. Dawson Nome going to pop it up. And the catcher for the Raptors. Colton Plagman. Plagman. He made that one look interesting as he was. Yeah, he didn't turn his back to the plate and kind of did it a little bit wrong. I'm not going to be critical. But he got it done. <laughs> but he, yep, he got the job done. First pitch to Noah Pitts, a backdoor curveball that catches the corner for strike one. And here's a fast ball and swung on and missed. 0 oh 2 the count now to the Volga Cormorant pickup player. And he hammers this one on the infield. Doug Sudbeck goes and grabs it and touches first. Two up and two down very quickly here. Three pitches. Four. Four. It used to be easier for Jody to count, but he lost a couple fingers, so when, uh, once it gets to three, he's... <laughs> it's just the gout. <laughs> it's so swollen, I can't count. It looks like two is one. And <laughs> Batter now is Mick Toulson. Takes the first pitch away for ball one. Mick will spray it around. I've seen him hit home runs to the opposite field, and I've seen him hit him down the line. As he pulls them, takes a wicked swing and comes up empty on that one. So it's one and one. Here's the pitch, and that misses outside. Ball two. He's got a very active approach to his uh, batting here. He jumps in there, and he is he, he just looks energized. Another <laughs> big swing, comes up empty again. Two and two the count, two down. Here's the pitch, and he... Grounds that one over to Doug Sudbeck. A quick inning, nine pitches, three up and three down for the Lake Norton Lakers. We'll head into the bottom of the second with Dimmick Emery coming to bat, leading 2-0, back in 60. 
When it comes to sports bars, the Sports Center in Larchwood, Iowa has put themselves above the rest. They open bright and early, 7 a.m. on weekdays and 10 a.m. on weekends, so you can start your day off right with them. And speaking of starting your day off right, they have daily food specials that will have your taste buds jumping for joy. The best flatbread pizza in the area, top-notch burgers, and don't worry, they have the best salad as well. The Sports Center in Larchwood. If you haven't tried it yet, put it down as your next destination. Say there was a place, the perfect place for the everyday things you need to take care of around the house. The squeaky hinges and burned out bulbs. The toilets that run and faucets that don't. That perfect place wouldn't be a warehouse. It'd be just the right size. It would be an ace. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their stuff. Welcome to the Home Convenience Store. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. What started out to be a... Welcome back to Cadwell Park. We go to bottom of two. Raptors coming to the plate. They lead this game by a score of two to nothing. Due up for the Raptors. It's going to be Aaron. Then flipping it over to the top of the order. Kitchens and Nash. Aaron, the left fielder, will be the first to face uh, Johnson. Johnson in that first inning threw 26 pitches, but none of them really bad. He had 16 of them for strikes. He was pounding the zone. The um, percentages, Phil Johnson at 63.64% strikes, and Jordan Johnson so far 61.54. And I think the first three pitches that Jordan Johnson threw were all balls. So Yeah. He's been over, or at about 70% since. First pitch this inning was a ball. Here's the second. And that's a Just off the plate. Ball. <laughs> Should we superimpose it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need the box. Here's the pitch. There's the called strike. Double lead off in air and good speed. If he's showing bunt, you got to think about it. Ball hammered out in right field. Oh, wow. That's Trevor Thewey going back, 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 and it lands on the warning track. He coasts into second base, and he has a stand-up double to lead things off here in the bottom of the second inning. Once again, the Raptors are in business as they roll things over to the top of the order. As Jody mentioned, Drew Kitchens, now the batter. Jordan Johnson showing some frustration out there on the mound. Kitchens, if you will remember, was plunked on the elbow a funny bone, which wasn't so funny to him, taking the brunt of that Johnson pitch. It's a oh, man. bunt for a hit. He punched at it. I think his intention was to get it beyond the mound. And it seemed so like it was hanging up in the air. I thought Jordan was going to have a chance to get it. I think Jordan thought he had a chance to get it. Yeah. It was just beyond his outreach glove. Look at that. Big old fly. They can't oh. get in. <laughs> <laughs> so runners on the corners. Nobody down. Peyton Nash is the batter. And Nash sacrificed bunted in his first plate appearance. Jordan Johnson with the token move over to first base. These two pitchers will be in a competition throughout the day to see who can throw the first slower. <laughs> they do that a lot. Token move, token move, and then a good move. Here's the pitch, and that misses outside. Ball one. Nikolai Arbach sauntering down to the bullpen. The very rangy righty. Going to get loose in case Johnson continues to struggle. There are five hits on the board already for the Dimmick Emery Raptors through one plus. And you mentioned courtesy runner in the last inning, J.D. Kirchner. He's a long, rangy pitcher. They get, they've got an arsenal of arms that yeah. they can come with. Yeah, and between those three, that's about 19 feet of man. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I kidded Nikolai. He, I asked him how hard he was throwing, and he said, oh, not very good, mid, mid-80s probably. I said, yeah, but when you're 12 feet tall, you're releasing it from 50 feet away. Makes a difference. Release point. 
That kid just towers over me. And I'm 6'4". All right, there's Cameron Dewey under the Peyton Nash foul ball, and he makes the play for out number one. That's a big out if you're Lake Norton. Still have a potential double play in order. And the hit and run was on. Kitchens had to hit the brakes about two-thirds of the way down to second and retreat quickly. Retreat quickly back to first. What did I miss? Oh, I was just talking about Kitchens was two-thirds of the way down. Oh. This is first pitch. They run the cut play. Coven Crum cuts the throw from Dewey and goes right to third base. Made it fairly close, but Aaron was back. The pitch was a ball, according to board. I, that's one thing as a scorer that I have trouble with is... Paying attention when there's a man the in throw. motion. Yeah. What was the what was the pitch? Did he swing? <laughs> was he did get called? So runners on second and third for the three batter in the order. Jason Schmidt already one for one on the day. Big big swing. <coughs> he had one idea. The count now one and two. Right now the winds here at Cadwell blowing straight in from center field or from left center across the diamond towards first base. Is there a bot? No. No, I think they're wondering if it's one and one or one and two. Okay, it's one and one. That's what I had when I saw the umpire flash one and two, I instinctively said it's one and two, but. He gets that little pinky yeah. up. Yeah. It looks like one and two. It does. Speaking of long and rangy, our home plate umpire looks like he might yeah. fit in that six foot five, six range. Schmidt takes a look at one low and away. He's up in the count, two one. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Infield playing generally in. 3 and 1 now the count. Middle infield playing about halfway. Getting, if it's a sharp hit ball, they're going to give the runners a look. Here's the 3 1. Dangerous pitch. Wow. Smashes it foul down the left field line. Jason Schmidt clearly can hit the ball everywhere. He was way out in front of the first pitch that he swung at. Would have pulled that one had he made contact. This time he slashes it down the left field line. He went to left in his first at bat. And he hits it with authority to every part of the park. And right on cue, he hits this one moderately deep out in left. Pitts makes the play. Now we've got a runner moving oh. up. Do we drop the ball or else there was going to be one hell of a play at third base? <clears throat> You're going to call the error at third? Yeah, he moved up on an error, yeah. but was it, was it the throw from Pitts? No, I thought the throw to Pitts was good. I thought Dome or whoever had the cut at third bobbled the ball. Should have cut it, and it gets through to the catcher, and that allows Kitchens to move up. But where, who, where did the throw come from that went to the catcher? Left field. Okay. Johnson going to see a fastball from Johnson, and Cleveland tracking, and Crummel hit the deck and give way to Cleveland for the F6 put out. So there was one run on two hits. There was one error and one man left on base. We'll head into the top of the third inning. The Dimmick Emery Raptors now leading 3-0. We'll be back in 60 seconds. 
small community celebration has grown into an attraction that draws literally thousands of people each year. Mark your calendars for June 19th, 20th, and 21st, 2025 for the 75th annual Tabor Check Days in Tabor, South Dakota. Check food, check music, and check hospitality await you in Tabor. Check Days is sponsored by the Tabor Chamber of Commerce and proudly supports the Tabor Bluebirds and Bonhomme High School Athletics. Sun Gold Sports is proud to call Mitchell and Huron home. With over 50 years of experience, we are here for all of your printing needs. Whether it's for your business, school, or personal, we are your one-stop custom shop. Screen printing, embroidery, vinyl, banners, trophies, awards, and so much more. Give Steph a call at 605-770-6829. Sun Gold Sports of Huron and Mitchell. We print t-shirts. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. We go top of three. The Lakers looking to uh, get on track here as they trail three to nothing. Kevin Crum, the second baseman, going to lead things off for the Lakers. Lifts this one on the infield. Doug set back over into foul territory, and he makes the play. One pitch, one out again here in the top of the third inning. And that's three consecutive defensive putouts for Sudbeck, two via ground ball in the last half inning. And now one with that pop fly. So Trevor Thuey steps up. He's the nine batter in the order, batted 256 on the season, playing right field for the Lakers. Throws left-handed, bats right-handed, if I'm not mistaken. Well, we can see he bats right-handed. Yep. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. I think both of these pitchers are now lathered up and have found their zone. Ooh. Thuy smashes that one at the second baseman. Pischke knocks it down, makes the play. Good job of getting his body in front of that. It wasn't going to get past him on the hard hit ground ball. Yep, used that full wide body, barrel chest, knock it down. A lot of smoke behind that Phil Johnson fastball lined at you. <laughs> yeah. Rolls things over to the top of the order. Jackson Nome steps up, takes the first pitch for a called strike. Jackson Nome hit a monster shot in the district tournament off the fair pole in Millbank. The fair pole probably is about 25 feet high, and it hit well up on the pole. The 0-2 delivery was hit to the shortstop, and Jackson oh. Nome hustling down the line. He makes it there, an infield single. Here's your instant replay. Yeah, last night we had so many bang bang plays. Kitchen with a great throw. I think he was safe. I do. I mean, I can't argue one way or the other. Can you cue that up again, Cole? I oh, will let it go. Gotcha. Jesse Van Overbeck now the batter again. I mentioned he's nursing a hammy, so he's the DH. They Matt Stevenson normally the DH for Lake Norton. Quick throw over to first base. A quick spin. Didn't didn't fire it over there. I think he's got a better move is what I'm trying to say, but quick footwork. There goes Noam. Jesse Van Overbeck hits this one into the net. We'll do her again. Owen won the count. Now that Johnson is kind of dialed in on that strike zone, he's putting a little more velocity behind these fastballs. There's another move over to first base. Chase is known back. Jesse Van Overbeck batted 288 on the regular season. And there's another move over to first base. What's he gone over there five times now yeah. when Nome's been on? He picked him the first time Nome was on base. <laughs> and there's a ball inside, and it gets away from the catcher. I, I'm not quick enough looking at the monitor. I don't think it skipped in, did it? No, that was a uh, Yeah, it did. It was a wild pitch. Okay. Plegman 
It would have taken a nice stop to get that one I knocked mean, down. Just the wrong spot to see that one. So the count now to Van Overbeck is one and two as he took that pitch for a called strike. Here's the one, two, and there's oh a boy. called strike. We got punchies, $10 once again to Mitchell Baseball. That's going to do it for the Lake Norton Lakers in the top of the third inning. There were no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We'll be back with the bottom of the third in 60 seconds. Say there was a place, the perfect place for the everyday things you need to take care of around the house. The squeaky hinges and burned out bulbs. The toilets that run and faucets that don't. That perfect place wouldn't be a warehouse. It'd be just the right size. It would be an ace. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know their stuff. Welcome to the Home Convenience Store. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is located in Platte. Since 1980, David has worked with his father, family, and hired men to provide bulls with the best health, management, selection, and genetics to produce a quality product to meet the customer's needs. Mark your calendar for their annual bull sale on the second Saturday of April. Check out their website at pvfcharlet.com or give David Mason a call for more information. Prairie Valley Farm Charlet is a proud supporter of all Black Panther school activities. Remember, U.S. beef. It's what's for dinner. Located in the heart of Mitchell, Blarney's is your one stop for mouthwatering food, refreshing drinks, and your latest sports action. Fans, it's state amateur baseball time, and Blarney's is your pre- and post-game destination. Whether you're finishing up the early game and need a spot to eat for lunch or celebrating a late-night victory, stop in at Blarney's and keep the party going with cool, refreshing drinks. Blarney's Sports Bar and Grill, a proud supporter of the state amateur baseball tournament. From your innovative attachment solutions provider for over 40 years, MDS Manufacturing. One of a kind. Revolutionary. Game changing. MDS doesn't make the loader. MDS makes the loader better. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. The Raptors are going to start out at the bottom of the third with Sam Pitch, Pischke, Plegman, and then Inquist to start things off. Johnson returns to the mound. He's got 42 pitches on that arm through two complete innings. He has given up three runs and, you said, five hits. That's unusual for Johnson. Not unusual. He just got tapped a little hard early. Well, it's settled in. Good hit in Dimmy Camry team. Here's the first pitch, and that's inside from ball one. Pisky one for one on the day. One thing about facing Dimmy Camry, you better be comfortable pitching to left handed batters. They got a lot of them. Schmidt, Inquist, Johnson, Pisky. Is that it? Phil Johnson, did you say him? Yep. Yep. Used to be eight of nine of them. Really? Yeah. They'd show up and you'd face eight. Four corners did that once too. Eight left-handed batters. Where do you find lefties? <laughs> <laughs> Called strike. That catches the outside corner. Count goes one and two. Well, I switch. I was a switch hitter. Not so much because I was good at it, just because I was confused. <laughs> kind of like my counting. <laughs> <laughs> two and two the count. Pishke digs in. Bumped up a little bit in the final game of district play. Looks like he's recovered. This one going to be flared over to the third base side in Dawson Nome. Will make the catch. Dawson Nome is a Legion pickup. Is he part of the Castlewood or Hamlin program up there? Don't even. Don't even. People's hearts just skipped a beat. He's part of the Lake Norton Badger program. No, no. Ba baseball? I'm talking right. high school. Oh. The, yeah, the, he was the, a Hamlin Charger. Hamlin Charger. Okay. 
First pitch from Johnson to Colton Plagman was a called strike. <laughs> Everybody's heart skipped to be. I'm, uh, yeah, I, I need to finish my thought. I don't made I? the <laughs> mistake a few years ago of there's a called strike. I was doing a Mobridge Pollock or a Harriet Selby game, but I made the mistake of seeing a, a former co-op and uh, the the other announcer is like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. There there was there was some." There were some feelings there, and <laughs> I've dredged up bad memories. Dawson, Dawson no one <laughs> fires it across to Mick Toulson for out number two. Two consecutive defensive putouts for Nome over at third base, trying to match Sudbeck, who had three consecutive putouts for Dimmick Emery. This is Josh Inquist. First pitch to Inquist, tying in for ball one. He was over uh, White Lake. Yeah, he was trying to think. He didn't pitch for Kimball White. Not White Lake, but uh, Plankington. Yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah, he was with Plankington. And then they lost him two, three years ago. And then this year they lost Travis Gant as he returned to the Gettys area and is now pitching for the Platt Killer Tomatoes. I didn't know that. I wondered about him, if he was retired or nope. what. He's still wheeling and dealing. One and one the count, and that was hit out to Kevin Crum, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Lake Norton Lakers. Much needed on the defensive side of things. Three up and three down. At the end of three, the Dimmick Emery Raptors continue to lead the Lake Norton Lakers 3-0. We'll be back in 60 seconds. As the weather warms up, so does our time outside. If you've been putting off your next home project, then Elite Renovations in Platt and Mitchell is ready to help. If you're looking to upgrade or update your roof, siding, windows, doors, and decking, they've got you covered. Interior trim, flooring, cabinets, tile, or drywall, they got the crews. Book a free consultation to discuss your options. Visit their website at EliteReno-SD.com to get started with your summer project. The one stop in Redfield is a friendly, family-owned business. We carry hot stuff, pizza, sandwiches, and more. Before you take a trip, or if you're just out and about, stop by and fuel up with Sinclair gasoline from E30 to E85. Use your Dino app for extra savings and your pump and save card for free stuff. Don't forget to visit the automatic car wash for that spotless shine. One stop in Redfield is a proud supporter of all school sports and activities. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. We're a third of the way through this game, and let's go ahead and take a look at the line score for this matchup between the Lake Norton Lakers and Dimmick Emery Raptors. Through three complete, I don't know what that is, instant replay. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right now, Lake Norton, no runs on two hits. They've committed one error. The throw from third to Sudback in time for out number one, finishing that line score, Dimmick Emery. Leading three runs on five hits. They've been clean through three innings. Schmidt with that strong throw across the diamond. So that was, I'm sorry, that was five, ground ball to Schmidt? Yep. Okay. Five, three put out. I was looking down. He made a whale of a throw from deep behind the bag. Josh Cleveland fouls that one off. Owen won the count to Josh Cleveland. Cleveland batted. He batted on the season. 3-0-3. This one going to be popped up. Going back from second base, Sam Pischke retreating and making the catch for the F4 put out. So we talked about both of the Johnson pitchers struggling early. They finally dialed in. They're throwing strikes. And now both teams are starting to play defense behind the pitcher. Batter's starting to struggle as the pitchers are taking charge. Called strike one. Dawson Nome takes a look at a fastball right down Broadway. Johnson comes again. Same pitch. And... Plagman might have taken the worst of that one right about that right thigh. <laughs> you see K 
catchers and umpires usually usually have each other's backs. Yeah. If the catcher gets hit, the umpire will go out and talk to the pitcher. If the umpire takes one, the catcher will go out and talk to the pitcher. Give the other guy there behind the plate a little time to let the bugs clear. John. One and two now. The count to Dawson Nome. Phil tried to get that 93 slider across again, just stayed a little too and high. That time he does get it. We got a punch out. Another $10 to Mitchell Baseball. Three up and three down for the Lake Norton Lakers in the top of the fourth. We remain 3-0 uh, here with the Raptors in, in the lead. They're coming to bat in the bottom of the fourth when we come back in a minute. Triatal is a telecommunications company that serves over 10 small communities. And just because you live in a small community doesn't mean that you can't get good service. For me, it's really important to be able to work remotely here in the country. If you live in the uh, Triatel service area and you're looking for a good, reliable, high-speed internet connection, we've served our members for 65 years and we're going to be serving you long into the future. Hey farmers, don't have the time or the means to haul your corn to market? Contact Derek or Phil at New Gen Energy. They are receiving corn six days a week and every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. is farmers only haul day. Located in Marion, South Dakota, New Gen Energy also sells distillers and corn oil. Call 605-648-2100 for all your corn needs and check out their website at newgenmarion.com. That's N-U-G-E-N-Marion.com. Better you starts closer to home with people who understand your way of life and belong to your community. Primary care providers at Horizon Health know you and know how to help you stay well. We're here to keep you healthy and care for you through every stage of life so you can keep doing what you love and make every day a better one. Schedule an appointment at horizonhealthcare.org. And we're back here at Canwell Park. Doug Sudbeck, the batter, followed the first one into the screen. 0-1 the count. Jordan Johnson set to deliver his 55th pitch, and that's high for ball one. 1-1 one one the count. Hammers this one out to the shortstop. Josh Cleveland knocks it down. Recovers, fires it, and gets Sudbeck by a couple steps at first base. Looked like that transmission never come out of second gear for Doug. <laughs> well, he's a classic. and He is. <laughs> I don't know how old he is. I was asking last night. Somebody said, well, he's in his 50s. But I, I cannot confirm nor deny that. He's been around for a while. Still smashes the ball most of the time when he hits it. I heard there's a comeback tour next year for another 50-year-old. Jody Brozick? Yes. New knee, new hip. Why not? Cleveland. Josh Cleveland, <laughs> almost a carbon copy of <laughs> the was. previous play. Knocks it down, finds the ears on it, and fires it across. Well, Josh Cleveland now has a chance to tie a record in baseball. Three assists in an inning. <laughs> Can't do any better. No, you cannot. Tied with That's four, on all 14 levels. Million, <laughs> tied with 14 million others. The batter is Drew Kitchens, leadoff batter, one for one on the day, was hit by a pitch in his first plate appearance, so he's been on base both times. Last at bat, he bunted, punched it past Jordan Johnson. Kevin Crum couldn't get there, so well-placed bunt. Slashes Ooh. this one out into right field past Mick Toulson. Looked two like, for two on the day. Yeah, and it looked like Toulson had a pretty good beat on it off the bat. Just couldn't get his feet to agree with what he was seeing. <laughs> so Peyton Nash steps up. He's 0 for 1 on the day. He's the center fielder for the Raptors. Sacrifice bunted in his first plate appearance. Fouled out, and, uh, fouled out to the catcher over to the third base side in his previous at bat. Here's the pitch, and that's a called strike. See if Drew Kitchens looks to move into scoring position here. 
Probably not a bad time to do it, 0-1. Hands on the knees. He's got his uh, oven mitt on. Chased back over there at first base. I'm still just flabbergasted that somebody made a... I know. <laughs> somebody's made millions <laughs> off putting oven mitts on baseball players. Kitchens needs to get dirty. Johnson's move's getting a little better with each throw over to first. I know. An oven mitt. <laughs> They're making millions. That's crazy. I'm going to hug him inside. One and one the count to Peyton Nash. Nash, another one of those lefties in the Raptor lineup. Oh, that's five. five. I didn't mention him. Yeah. Kitchen's got a little bit bigger lead over there. Keep an eye on that over at first. Yeah, and he's only got one hand on the knee now. Doesn't go. And it's taken high for ball two. Two and one the count with two down, runner on first base. Do we taking signs from the dugout? Am I seeing that correct? No, he was just looking at the on deck guy. Wrong dugout. I hope he's not taking signs from that there one. There goes the runner. <laughs> Peyton Nash tried to shoot it out to the left side. I do believe that was probably a designed hit and run. Two and two the count with two down. I would guess Kitchens will be on the go just for fun. Yeah, he's doing some uh, till work out there. On his way back to first. So token move. Yeah, Johnson must be onto something. Elbow on each knee means he's going. If there's only one elbow on a knee, you're good. There's two again. And he stays put. There's ball three. Full count. He will be going this time. And the dangerous Jason Schmidt is on deck. Here's the pitch. Hit out into shallow center field, and Josh Cleveland not able to corral that. It was a very tough play. That's a base hit. That was his chance at a world record. Yeah. Well, no, that would have been a put out, not an assist. So. Not an assist. Yeah, hit. Is that a classic definition of a Texas leaguer? Yes, sir. Yeah, it is. <laughs> And here comes Schmidt. Or a blooper or a duck snort. I've heard a, a, duck heard snort. a lot. Dying quail. Yeah. <laughs> duck snort. Where did we hear that last year? <laughs> Probably me. It goes back to, geez, when I was playing Legion ball, one of my friends said it. A duck snort. So Kitchens is all the way over to third. Look for the Raptors. Nash with good speed. Do they try to move him up into scoring position right away? Or, boy, Schmidt swings the bat. Maybe not. Well, I'd say chances are good that he's on the move right now. But I'm not the coach, so. Look at second it's and short. short lead. Yeah, they're right up the middle, aren't they? They're hugging second base. Huge gap between third and shortstop and first and second on that infield. They're cheating in and trying to turn the double play. <laughs> Not going to be a double play on that one. It's going to be an RBI single. Trevor Thewey gets it in in a hurry, so the runner from first moves up to second. And that alignment didn't hurt him. The only one that could make the play there would have been Mick Toulson over at first had he been off yep. the base by an extra step. 
Bert Toulson's going to come out and talk things over with his pitcher. We'll uh, step aside for at least 30 seconds and be back shortly. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Land and Cattle. Here's Cody. Well, it's, it's a really good option to acquire some excellent genetics uh, for an affordable price. Uh, it's become really popular. When you first hear about leaf bulls, sometimes it may frighten a person. So that this is a different ball game. You know, there's a there's a genetic program behind these bulls. These are bulls that, that have a genetic program and, and really are designed genetically to very nice calves. Call 1-800-548-BULL. At Lesterville Feed and Grain, they pride themselves on offering top-notch products at competitive prices. Whether you're looking for feed for your livestock or grains for your crops, they have you covered. And with their market bids, you can rest easy knowing you're getting the best deal possible. But it's not just about the products, it's about the service. Their knowledgeable staff is there to help answer any questions you may have and provide expert advice to help you succeed in your farming endeavors. Shields All Sports Store is your one stop for everything outdoors with local experts eager to guide you through the widest selection of brands. Your one stop for exercise gear to get working out or fashions for going out. And your one stop for footwear in your size, your style, yours to take home today. Shields, employee owned, community minded and like no place you've ever shopped before. Welcome back to Cadwell Park here in Mitchell, South Dakota. Game three of the 92nd Annual State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Pitching change. Box got all those for you. Nikolai Arbach steps onto the mound now. Jordan Johnson will be lifted. He's out of the game. They will keep their DH. Nikolai Arbach stands. Well, we joke how tall he is. He's, he's got to be 6'7", if not 6'8", or 9". The very rangy... Young man um, pitched for the Clark Traders in the tournament as a pickup player two years ago, I believe. Maybe it was four. Um, pitched against the Plankinton Bankers and had us in the game, had the Traders in the game into the seventh inning and then got in a little trouble, gave up, well, gave up a home run in that hide it and that was the end of his day but he's he's a good pitcher long story short he's been up in Alaska he started the season with the Lakers went up to Alaska to play in one of the developmental leagues now he's back here's the pitch from Nikolai and that misses low for ball one Phil Johnson the batter one for two on the day one of the eight Raptor hits he got that infield single that Crum dove on and kept on the infield or just into the outfield grass 1-0 pitch, and he slashes that one foul and out of play. Nikolai, a little more velocity. Always has had pretty good control. You said he threw mid, low 80s? He said he's hitting mid. He comes from different arm slots. Pitches at Dakota State. Okay, didn't know that. Played uh, Legion Baseball for Hamlin. And the 1-1 delivery. Sweeper, and it's back to Nikolai, and he tosses over to first base to retire the side. Not before Dimmick Emery extends their lead by another one. They're up 4-0 as we come back. We'll be in the top of the fifth with the Lakers coming to bat. 
Dr. Kelly Tobin and staff at Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic are proud supporters of high school athletics. When it comes to large and small animal health, look to Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. They understand how important your livestock is to you and will give you service that you can depend on. Call 539-1040. That's 539-1040. Rolling Hills is located on Dakota Avenue across from Farm Bureau in Wessington Springs. Rolling Hills Veterinary Clinic. Being a part of a community means sharing the history and future of the people all around you. For 115 years, First Fidelity Bank has been doing just that, helping you get the most out of life by providing the services and tools you need, the conveniences and technology you want, and the friendly faces you expect. So you get everything you need right here in the place you call home. Now and for many years to come. First Fidelity Bank. The Heart of Farming Season. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. This is Jody Brozick and Brock Greenfield on the call here for Game 3 of the tournaments. To McEmory, the Raptors lead the Lakers 4 to nothing as we go to top of 5. This is going to be the Volga Comorant pickup player, Pitts. Cor Cormorant. Cormorant. Darn me. It's funny, my dad used to hunt with a guy, and he, he couldn't say cormorant. He always called him concormadonuts. <laughs> concormadonuts. <laughs> well, I'm calling him cormorants. <laughs> Two and one to count to pits. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Phil Johnson has now thrown 54 pitches, and there's a swing and a miss at number 55. Somebody said there was a bird's nest up here. I wonder if it was for the bluebirds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bluebird fans start to roll in. Zach, or uh, not Zach, Noah Pitts. Going to reach base. Hits one up the middle. Pitts now one for two. And Mick Toulson now up to bat. Probably not a bunt situation. Down four with the bottom of the order behind him. Not not the tail end, but coming into the bottom. First pitch taken for a ball. Here's the pitch. Man, he does turn on it, doesn't he? <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> so when he hits it, he turns on it. <laughs> we played him in Legion up in Webster in a tournament, and he hit a home run over the left center field wall. Really? Yeah. Somebody was throwing smoke. <laughs> hey, what a nice catch. play out there in right field. Inquest gets there. Takes care of the line shot that would have been a base hit. He looked like he was on ice skates trying to figure yeah. it out out there and left or right. Well, you got a right-handed pitcher, a left-handed batter, and a wind that's pretty stout. It so has been. It's got to be playing some tricks on the ball. Here's the pitch to Kevin Crum, taken for a called strike. I just noticed something. I haven't really ever been behind the plate when Kevin's been up, but he steps in the bucket a little bit. Chopper on the infield. Everybody's probably going to be safe. Give him a hit. Kitchens did make an effort. Yeah, it was a good effort, too. He had a shot. Pretty good speed down the line from Crum there. He's not the fleetest of foot, but he was hustling from the moment he stepped out of the box. Now Trevor Thewey steps up. He is 0 for 1 on the day. One His away. Previous at bat, he hit a screamer to the second baseman and grounded out. Lakers mounting a little bit of a threat here. Another Smashes hit. that one out into center field. They're going to go station to station, I think. Yes, sir. And Noah Pitts has to hustle back as <laughs> Phil Johnson fired over to third. And that takes us to the top of the order. One of the guys who does have some pop, but the wind is working against him. We got a visit from the uh, manager. I doubt they're going to lift Phil at this point. Just settle him down so we're not going to step away unless you're no. dying to. 
No, I was just thinking as Barcher makes the trip to the mound in that elimination game against Parks and the Mudcats, Jason Schmidt was on the mound. And playing on that turf, it was super hot. It was a hot day anyway. He tried to lift Schmidt a couple times. First time, Schmidt waved him away. Second time, he come out there in another inning. He knew he was going to get waved away, so he just brought a glass of ice water out there with him. <laughs> <laughs> and he finally, I think, gave way in like the seventh or eighth inning. Um, you look at these pitchers and Phil Johnson and Jason Schmidt, they've been doing it a long time. They're, yeah. they're part managers. And they're Quist. invested. Yeah. So Nome steps up, the base is loaded, one out. The pond is full of Lakers. First pitch taken for a called strike. Or is the Lakers full of ponds? <laughs> Fouled off, 0-2. Now the count to Jackson Nome. Jesse Van Overbeck waits on deck. And a big swing and a miss. Just what the doctor ordered if you're the Dimmick Emery Raptors. So now two down, bases remain loaded. Well, if you're Norton, you really want to push a couple runs across here. Yeah. You'd probably take a wild pitch or a pass ball that moves runners up and then a base hit that knocks in the other two that are out there. Doesn't look like that's in the cards, though. Phil has thrown four straight pitches since the visit. For strikes, I mean. And this one hammered foul. And have all of them in either a curveball curve. or a slider? I think so. Oh, and to the count. Two down. Here's the pitch. And this one's back up the middle. Phil looked like a hockey goalie there. <laughs> he, as he did. <laughs> blocks it, knocks it down, and flips it to first. That's going to put down the uh, little pseudo rally. No runs, three hits, no errors, and three men left on base. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Is coming up, and Katon International is your KHIH dealer in Crofton, Nebraska. Katon International offers top notch parts and service to keep your equipment running smoothly all season long. Their team of experts is there to help with any maintenance or repairs you may need, so you can focus on what you do best farming. And don't forget to check out their website for the latest deals and promotions. Whether you're in the market for a new piece of equipment or just need some replacement parts, Katon International has you covered. We travel in packs, fearless first-timers and go-getters, sightseers and mudslingers, trail conquerors and adrenaline junkies. We believe great rides deserve great company. And wherever the ride takes us, there's always room for one more. Experience the enduring legacy of Castlewood Farms Elevator, a farmer-owned cooperative that has served the ag community for more than a century. Dedicated to enhancing efficiency and offering superior services, they provide a comprehensive range of crop nutrition, protection products, commercial fertilizer, and livestock feed. Visit CastlewoodElevator.com or give them a call today. Your ultimate destination for agriculture needs is Castlewood Farmers Elevator. Ravens are next. Ravens in the back box. Yeah, we're back here at Cadwell Park, and we were looking ahead to the Team 4 matchup. Castlewood versus Tabor should be a good one. <gasps> That's right. The Bluebirds. Up there in the District 1 tournament, there were a lot of one one run ball games, including Millbank and Clark in the semis, Lake Norton and Castlewood in the semis, Ca uh, Clark and Elkton two times. Clark won the first game and lost the last chance game, both to Elkton. So very competitive teams coming out of that area this year, and uh, one of them draws the Dimmick Emery Raptors, and one of them draws the Tabor Bluebirds back-to-back -back here today 
in this opening round of Thursday action. First pitch from Nikolai Arbach to Sam Pischke is a called strike. It sweeps in the back door. That release point is really tough. Does he switch up angles there? Yeah, he does. I he, I used to see him more three-quartered over the top, but I've seen him dropping down a lot more uh, as I was watching him warm up today. That time he drops down side-armed, and Pischke deposits it into center on the line. Pischke now two for three with a single. Colton Plagman now the catcher steps up. He has flied out to right and grounded out to th third, excuse me. And Plagman is the sixth batter in the lineup. We'll see if they look to try to move a runner one way or another. Yeah, Pishke's got good enough wheels. He can there go. He shows bunt. Oh, what a bunt. It's got to be a single, doesn't it? It's a hit. Yeah. The uh, Lake Norton Lakers are pleading their case, and I'm not sure if they thought there was some kind of interference or what, so we'll uh, let the dust settle here. I don't think there was interference, Brock. I, I, I don't know what their claim is, but virtually everybody on the infield was saying something was awry. Bert Toulson came out of the dugout. He's standing there ready to pounce, depending on what the call is, so we'll see. Pounce. <laughs> I feel like we should be talking to uh, fill in the dead time, but... I'm just more interested in knowing what's going to happen. Now he's going to go over and talk to the Dim McEmory coach. So I think they're telling the runners to go, the runner to go back. I don't know. Foul ball. Interesting. I don't know. He might have. No way. It might have hit his foot in the box. I just don't I, know. But credit the umpires for taking their time to talk through what they saw. I think uh, Crum might be saying, well, if it hit him, he was out of the box. I don't know. I'd be interested in going back and looking at that. Nikolai Arbach was in the stretch and still a conversation going out there. So he steps off. Now we're ready to roll. Owen won the count. And again, it's Colton Plagman back in the box with the runner at first. Shows Bunt again. Pops it up. And Nikolai not able to get there. And what he, a play. What a play. It, it strikes me that when he, when he was down on his knees, he was still nearly as tall as his catcher. <laughs> and what I recognize is he was falling towards home plate and used that throwing motion, that whip motion to get that solid throw all the way over to first. No instant replay on that one. That's interesting. One down now with the runner on second base. The batter is Josh Inquist. 0 for 1 on the day. Here's the pitch. Big swing and a miss. Inquist walked in his first plate appearance, grounded out to the second baseman in his second Plate appearance, first at bat of the day. Here's the pitch, and he shows bunt, pulls back, and takes it for a called strike. <laughs> you know, if he puts that one up the third baseline, the third baseman's going to stay home. The second or the shortstop's clear over by second base, so. He would have been buttoned for a hit if he was serious about it there. Here's the pitch. And that's a punch out. Looked like it was a little high right at the top of the zone, apparently. And that's going to be out number two. So that brings to the plate Doug Sudbeck, 0 for 2 on the day. He grounded out 
in his last at bat to the shortstop and flight out in foul territory to the third baseman in his first at bat. Back to that strikeout. It looked like a rising fastball. There's a called strike. Again, a curveball. Nikolai has above average velocity, but he's thrown a lot of breaking stuff since he's entered the game. Of course, Dimmick Emery was showing that they can hit the fastball when Johnson was on the mound, so mm -hmm. probably not a bad idea. Here's the pitch, and another curveball, and another called strike. Sudbeck's not loving that one. You know, early in the game, it was the Lakers complaining about the breaking balls being called now that Nikolai is on the mound. Mm. Tit the for pass. <laughs> Line drive out to Josh Cleveland, and he corrals it for out number three. There were no runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left on base in the bottom of the fifth. We'll head into the top of the sixth. Lake Norton got some work to do. They're trailing 4-0, and they've got four frames left to try to break through. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Discover a piece of Americana at Cones Corner, a renowned 1920s rural gas station turned firearm haven in the upper Midwest. Since 2004, their updated store has preserved nostalgia with gas pumps and snacks for travelers alongside a selection of 2,500 firearms. Purchase in-store or through Charlie for global delivery. They buy single guns, entire collections, and offer trades. Whether you're a collector or looking to sell, they've got you covered. Cones Corner, proud sponsor of Castlewood Youth Athletics and Events. At Heartland State Bank, our customers are at the center of everything we do. Heartland State Bank is a family-owned community bank and here for you. We have an experienced lending staff for fast, local decisions. Heartland State Bank offers competitive rates and is proud to provide uptown services with a hometown touch. With four locations in Redfield, Tulare, Westington, and Highmore, we aspire to support the communities we live and work in. Heartland State Bank, member FDIC. Back here at Cadwell Park, we may have our third bingo winner of the year as we uh, are just getting rolling here in the 92nd Annual State Baseball Tournament. Good crowd on hand for game one of day two. Cameron Thuey stepping to the plate. Phil will start him off with a fastball for strike one. Did he swing? Nope. Okay. Thank you. There's the breaking ball. That one's lifted out into left center field. Peyton Nash tracks it down for out number one. He was just gliding across the pasture out there, a little antelope to make that catch. You know, it's really fun to watch a lot of these center fielders. They're some of the best athletes on the field, and they're – Fleet to foot, and they get good jumps most of the time, and they track down some balls that somebody like me can only <laughs> stand in awe of. First pitch to uh, Josh Cleveland was a strike. Here's the second one. Shoots that one down the uh, first baseline into foul territory. 0-2 the count. Phil Johnson now at 72 pitches. He has thrown 54 strikes for a 75% clip. Incidentally, Nikolai Arbach, I hate to jinx the kid, but he's uh, thrown 13 pitches in his relief effort, and 12 of them have been strikes for over 92%. Jordan Johnson, 62.69 in his work time on the mound today. And that ball is hit out into right center field, and Nash once again tracks it down for out number two. A little more effort put into getting that one as the wind was knocking it down. Blown across the field from center to right. But again, you got the best view of home plate as a center fielder. You should be able to see it off the bat, and he does well. No tracking that one down. <laughs> Dawson Noam hits a laser beam into left field. I feel like there was a Star Wars reference there. Uh, not Star Wars. Uh, Austin Powers. Austin Powers. Lazy. 
Noah Pitts up to bat. Takes first pitch outside, maybe a little bit low. Ball one. No one with the modest lead over there at first. Noah Pitts follows this one off. Nope. Maybe Pass he ball. didn't. I'll be darned. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Plagman just going to see that one get by him. Alligator armed it. Yeah. Here's the pitch. And that one misses outside. Two and one the count now. Winds are picking up here at Cadwell. You know, based on what I said about the efficiency of Phil Johnson, Lake Norton continues to go up there. Now, Pitts has gotten a couple hacks, but they've still been taking a lot of pitches. This ball hit to Doug Sudback <gasps> over at first. He doesn't come up with it. It's going to be an error. Noah Pitts reaches on the error. Fairly tough hop there, but Sudbeck not able to smother it and get a handle on it quick enough. You know, I thought he reached easily. That was actually much closer watching the replay than I thought live. You know, give Phil credit for getting off the mound and getting over there and giving him a chance. Right. A lot of times a guy will just stand there and spectate. And I have another... Visit from Barcher, runners on the corners, two down, and the Lake Norton Lakers will send Mick Toulson to the mound. I'm guessing they're going to talk about how to work him. Again, he's the sixth batter in the order. Uh, he's seven today. They bumped him down with Noah Pitts in the lineup. Mick was a three batter most of his career. He's bumped down a little bit the last couple Mitchell Noem not here today. He has started med school, so a very key cog in their lineup. For arguably their best hitter. Nothing taking nothing away from anybody else, but uh, where, where is he? Mitchell right there. Batted five sixteen is all on the season. Their best uh, average and probably probably had more home runs than anybody else on the team. He normally pops a few out. So where did he do med school? Because if it was at USD, he should have been here. He's down at used. Where? Used. <laughs> USD spells used, doesn't it? Uh, only but they it, are they're in class. Only if you're an SDSU student. <laughs> <laughs> one on one the count to Mick. Swing and a miss. I called Mick Mitchell. That is his given name. And I think for a second he thought, does he think I'm Mitchell Noem? I said, I know, your, I know your real name. He said, how many guys on your team do? He says, probably less than half. Pretty much always been called Mick. Takes that one a little bit high. That was borderline. Could have gone either way. Two and two to count. Runners on the corners, two down. Here's the pitch. And it's a swing and a miss, and it gets down into the dirt, and Plagman comes up with it, throws it to Doug Sudbeck, and that retires the side. There were no runs, one hit, one error, and two men left on base. We'll head into the bottom of the sixth with the Raptors continuing to lead the Lakers 4-0. Back in a minute. They seem like the smallest town in South Dakota, so how could it have everything you need when you may find yourself in the middle of nowhere? But at Canova Service Center, whatever you may need in the middle of nowhere, that's where they are. Fencing, lumber yard, hardware, oil changes, tire sales, and repair. Rental equipment, feed bunks, cattle shelters, convenience store, and more. So no, you're not in the middle of nowhere. It's the Canova Service Center. We're your local one-stop shop. This is Angela, owner and operator of Amcota Farm and Home Center. From the DIYers, fixer-uppers, to contractors, we have what you need to get the job done. Building supplies, Valspar paint, and tools. Crystal X tubs, fencing supplies, and bog boots for your farm needs. We know how busy life can get. We offer delivery to make your life easier. 
Amcota Farm and Home Center on Dakota Avenue in Westington Springs. Big city value. If you love being outside. Welcome back here to Cadwell Park. For nothing as we go to the bottom of six. Timmy Cameron has just held off the Lakers in the last few innings as they've been able to hook men on base. There's a stat that we haven't been watching. The LOBs left on base and right now Lakers in the last few innings. Five men left on base. Base is loaded and two men on the Tough. You'd like to see that two out yet but give credit to Phil Johnson and the Raptors. And ben, but don't break. Yep. And now we start off with Chase Aaron, the left fielder. Aaron, one for two on the day. I think this is his first look at Nikolai, if I'm not mistaken. Takes first pitch for a ball. Aaron had that stand-up double. I just glanced back. It is the first time he's faced Nikolai. Nikolai now beginning his third inning in relief. He's managed four outs since Johnson gave way. There's a chopper, and it's handled by Cameron Thuey. He fires to first base for out number one. Nikolai has been very efficient. Yeah, he has. 15 out of 16, I'm sorry, 14 out of 16 pitches for strikes. Did he give up that run in the fourth? No. No, he did not. He was in relief after that. Right. Yeah, that was the knockout punch that brought him in. So the batter now is Drew Kitchens, top of the order. He's been on base three times, two for two with a hit batsman. Takes first pitch for a ball. Nikolai works out of the stretch all the time. Here's the 1-0 sweeper. My dad asked me, what's, what's this sweeper they call, you know, they call now? And I had to look it up to see. It's just a curveball, yep. but it's more of a 9-3 to three break than what a lot of guys like is a little downward motion. Here's the pitch. That one had some whip on it. It came back a little with a tail on it. Misses outside for ball two. Two and one the count. Here's the 2-1 from Nikolai, and that one misses inside. I thought it might clip him, but it did not. So first time he's been down in the count significantly, it's 3-1. and one. Here's the pitch, and oh. that one does get him. Not on the elbow. <laughs> Took that one on the rump. Probably the, was it the rump? I think it was closer to the rump, the hip. Well, it was closer. Yes, I thought it was possibly <laughs> even the knee, but. <clears throat> Peyton Nash steps up. The center fielder is one for two on the day. Sacrifice bunted in his first plate appearance, flied out in foul territory to the catcher in his second and single on a pop fly that Josh Cleveland wasn't able to track down in shallow center field. Here's the first pitch, and that's ball inside. So Boy, that I did looked, jinx him. That looked like that even got a little bit of the jersey there with the wind. Close. He had thrown 12 out of 13 strikes until I opened my See? fat mouth. See, now that you admitted it, he's back in. <laughs> <laughs> one on one the count. Ace is wild. Wow. <laughs> Once. Yeah. See? <laughs> Decent lead over there at first. Uh oh. Here's the pitch, and he slashes it foul out of play over the third base dugout. See, at one point there, he dropped the elbow off the knee. <laughs> hmm. 
didn't know, and he swung the mitt, and I thought maybe oh. he was trying to get some momentum. Kitchen's over at first, keeping an eye on that. Kitchen's with the mitt, the kitchen mitt. That's good. <laughs> and a defensive swing to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Really being methodical. Yeah, the first two pitchers, well, the two Johnsons, very quick working, but <gasps> he had him leaning. Totally fooled him. If the throw to first would have been down, would have given Mick a chance to slap the tag on. Still pretty close over there. Yeah, that was really close. He was safe, but he's leaning back now. That kitchen mitt huh. is leaning towards first. Did he backdoor him? Not well, quite. That was awfully close. That really was. I would say this ump has been pretty consistent throughout. Maybe miss a couple, but <laughs> that's human nature. Might have missed just off the corner. Two and two the count. There's the pitch. Smashed foul down the first baseline this time. Hammered it, but foul. Tony Campbell heading down the line to retrieve it. Campbell played in the, I believe, the championship game at the district tournament against Millbank. Another veteran. Here's the 2-2 again, lifted into center field. Jackson Nome ranges over. Two down now. Nash now one for three with that put out. Jason Schmidt with two of the nine Raptor hits on the day. One to left, one to right. And a sacrifice to left. Two for two with a sack fly. That wasn't his best move by any means. No, and his footwork was kind of awkward that time. First pitch to Schmidt on the way. That's a called strike. Paints the inside corner. Schmidt was nodding. He knew it was before the call was made. That's one as a lefty I, I didn't like. I couldn't do much with it, so probably best to say I'll look at another one. I got the same pitch. And I was ready for it. <laughs> and Thuy was playing very deep, so that's going to land a runner on third base. Kitchens on the hustle. Moves up first to third. Three hits for Schmidt today. <laughs> and Phil Johnson now the batter. Feeling another, another one of those Raptor lefties. He loves to swing with bad intentions. <laughs> That's for sure. Phil probably took a look out at the scoreboard and said, I can hit that. Or over it. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch to Johnson on the way. There goes a the runner, tapped out to Kevin Crum at second. That's a candy hop for Crum up and over to first base for out number three. So Lake Norton avoids further damage, and they put down the Raptors. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We'll head into the top of the seventh inning. We got a third of the way to go. Lake Norton trailing 4-0. We'll be back in 60 seconds. 
side, solving problems, and working with your hands, apply now at James Valley Landscape Solutions. James Valley offers on-the-job training in all aspects of the green industry with modern equipment and technology and competitive pay. Benefits include overtime pay, health care, dental, vision, and more. Apply now at jamesvalleylandscape.com or in person at 600 West Spruce in Mitchell. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator is a proud supporter of the Mount Vernon Mustangs at the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator has been servicing the Mount Vernon area for over 75 years. See them for your agronomy and feed needs no matter the farming season. They will take care of all your grain handling needs as well. Mount Vernon Farmers Elevator would like to wish the Mustangs and all the teams best of luck at the state tournament. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. Let's go ahead and take a look at the line score as Kevin Crum steps to the plate. Lakers right now looking for their first run. They've got six hits committed in air. Raptors have put up two in the first, one in the second, one in the fourth to lead 4 nothing on ten hits, and they have committed an error of their own. First pitch to Crum missed outside. Second pitch hugged him inside. 2-0 and the count. And there's a called strike. Yeah. Get me over fastball. More of a power change. Oh. And there's a little bit of a bender for called second strike. Two and two now the count. What is this? I've never seen an ump take time to write a love letter during a game. <laughs> well, wait, while we have a moment, let's Letters. thank our friends over at Dimmick Cheese. They're proud to carry a wonderful selection of homemade artisanal cheeses. Feel free to shop their selection of cheese gift box, cheese trays, and more on their website at Dimmick Cheese. Love letter. <laughs> I don't know. It was clearly a warning. No. That was being recorded. That would have been my guess. Uh, I suspect that Crum said something about the pitch, but I've never seen a production like that. Kitchens make that one look easy. You better have some really good wheels. We saw it earlier. Somebody beat out one of those plays. Crum actually beat one out. Well, he hit it more in the hole over there between third and short, and Kitchens wasn't able to get enough on it. And you had mentioned that he was hustling down the line. <clears throat> was that Crum also? Yeah. Well, Trevor Thewey now the batter. What's that? They've each won one battle. In yeah. <laughs> See if we get a third one later. Called strike. So one down, the number nine batter up. He's one for two on the day. Jackson Nome waits on deck. Norton would love to roll things over with a man on. There's a called strike. It's really interesting. You don't see normally this many breaking balls out of Phil Johnson. He can throw them when he wants to, but he's really relied on it here in these middle innings. Uh, <laughs> swing and a miss. Out number two. <coughs> so Phil Johnson now has six strikeouts on the day. Jordan Johnson didn't accumulate any, and Nikolai Arbach has one, so Phil getting after it. Been a pretty well-played ball game. A couple uh, miscues by the Lake Norton Lakers. Two errors on the board for them. There's a called strike. No, one and one the count. That was a fastball. Just painted it. That one missed inside. Noam tried to lean into that one, I think, again. Obviously not afraid of getting hit by a pitch. <laughs> that ball 
a little bit inside, but <clears throat> a called strike. Chopped foul. I should have said it appeared to be a little bit inside. The ump has a better vantage point than I. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that's his seventh mm. strikeout. Three up and three down for Lake Norton in the top of the seventh. They got work to do. We're heading into the bottom. We're going to stretch here. We'll be back in a minute and a half. Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Each family's needs are different and special. Will Funeral Chapel will listen with sensitivity, answer all questions, and respect your choices. The Will Funeral Chapel staff can assist you in planning and coordinating all the details. They will explain all the different options to make you feel at ease and most comfortable with all the decisions. Find out more by visiting their website at willfuneralchapel.com. Their sincerest hope is that you and your family will be comforted by their efforts. Are you in need of high quality lumber for your next project? Looking for top notch agronomy services to keep your crops thriving? Need a reliable source of propane and fuel for your home or business? Look no further than Tabor Lumber Co-op. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIY enthusiast, Tabor Lumber Co-op has everything you need to get the job done right. And with their competitive prices and top-notch customer service, you'll be glad you chose Tabor Lumber Co-op for all your lumber, propane, and agronomy services. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. We go to the bottom of seven, and before we do, let's go take a moment to thank Trio Tell Communications for being a sponsor, helping you bring, helping us bring you coverage of this tournament. They have over 900 miles of fiber optic cable traveling throughout their service area, communities, and they provide the fastest internet speed, elite television packages, and as always, reliable telephone service. Sam Pischke steps up to the plate, takes the first pitch, perhaps a little off the outside corner for ball one. Pischke is two for three on the day. Second baseman for the Dimmick Emery Raptors. Here's the 1-0, that misses inside. He did not want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Arbach fastball surprise jumped in on him. Yeah. yeah, after you see one on the outside corner, you might be leaning that way a little bit, expecting him to work outside. There's a backdoor curveball for a called strike. Two and one now the count. Here's the pitch, and that's a called strike. Pretty good velocity on that one. Mm -hmm. Again, like it had a little tail on it. He's in total command up on that bump. He's going to work at his pace, and he's able to hit the pitches he wants to hit. <laughs> Chopper to Dawson Noam. He's up with it and throws across for out number one. So Nikolai, after getting down in the count, 2-0 and oh, comes back and induces an easy ground ball for Dawson Noam, the Legion pickup player. The batter now is Colton Plagman. 0 for 2 on the day is the catcher. Flight out to right, grounded out to third, and bunted, sacrifice back to Nikolai in his previous plate appearance. There's a curveball for a called strike. Oh, one the count, one down. Pitch to Plagman, and that's a called strike.
And there's a foul Cowball. tip. Yeah. Stays alive. Rodney not not on the ball over there. I didn't hear one of his three staying alive type songs. <laughs> and he can't hear us. No. He or he's ignoring us. Chopper up the middle. Josh Cleveland up with it over to first base to Mick Toulson to retire Plagman. Josh Inquist now steps up. He's 0 for 2 on the day. He's walked, grounded out to second, and struck out looking. That's the one strikeout on the Dimmick Emery side of things. I bet he doesn't do it again. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. <coughs> oh, there's a C9 single. It's his first hit of the day. I'm just going to go check this to make sure I heard what I thought I heard you say. The, ar the arsenal of the Lakers have only combined for one strikeout and two salty pitchers up on the bump. That says a lot about what Dimmick Emery has done. Just put the bat on the ball. For certain. Doug Sudbeck now the batter. He's hit the ball hard. A couple times, but 0 for 3. Runner was on the move as Sedbeck slapped it foul. He's showing he, wa he wanted to go to right field. That was a designed hit and run. Good guy to do it with. Yeah. You don't say that very often of an 8 hitter, but he has the hand-eye coordination to guide it through the hole over there. Good contact hitter. Here's the 0-1. Nope. Quick move over to first base. Well, wherever you're joining us from, thank you for tuning in. It's a joy to bring you these games. Here's the 0-1 now. Fouled into the net. And again, he tried to stroke that to right field just a little bit under that one. Yeah, she's breezy right now. Yeah, I see the camera bouncing a little bit. When you move it out, oh, okay. it stabilizes. But the tighter you try coming in with that breeze, boy, she will take off on you. Slap there foul he did again. It again. He is really trying to hit behind Inquest over at first. Count remains 0 2. Pretty good crowd here on a Thursday afternoon. What else would you be doing on a Thursday afternoon? Working? Yeah, I know. That's no fun. <laughs> plowing the back 40. Oh, no, we're not plowing yet. Ball. Harvesting? Light into foul territory. Dawson Noam calls off Cameron Thuey and makes the play. So there were no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. We'll head into the top of the eighth. Lake Norton coming to bat, trailing 4 0 when we come back in a minute. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platt, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at FarmCoSD.com. FarmCo, feeding your future. Agronomy Plus. 
Welcome back to Cadwell Park. As we said, as we exited, Lakers coming to the plate here in the top eight. Looking to get something going. They trail by a score of four to nothing. Have left here in recent innings, several men on base, just not able to get that crucial hit at the crucial moment. Going to start things off here. Is this... Jesse Van Overbeck, he has lined out to the second baseman, struck out looking, and grounded out to the pitcher. This time he hits the first pitch that he sees out into the right field. And... It's going to be a base hit. I was surprised there that Inquist didn't try to dial up a 9-3 put out. Van Overbeck, Van Overbeck recognized it, and he was hustling. Sawyer Schultz. Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> Remember that? He's a Hogan Hogan's hero. Hogan's <laughs> heroes, of course. First pitch to Cameron Thuey misses for ball one. And that one's low for ball two. Two and all the count. Cameron Thuey's got to be expecting a get-me-over fastball here, and he should know what to do with it. Phil always animated when somebody calls time. Mm. I think he could have uh, maybe have taken Simone's spot on the gymnastics <laughs> team there with that. He'd look good in a leotard, wouldn't he? <laughs> he would. <laughs> oh, he didn't... Schultz, first ball that hit, is hit at him, he handles without a problem. The batter now is Josh Cleveland, 0 for 3 on the day. Struck out looking, flight out to second, flight out to center. One down, runner on first. Cleveland waves and misses at the first pitch. Here's the pitch. Slapped down the first baseline. Foul. There just happened to be two young men in the bullpen wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them is going to get a dollar for being on top. <laughs> No, it's two to ten. Well, you can keep it. Yeah, not ten. What are you talking about? Did somebody? Is there a sponsor? Oh, oh wow! What effort. Plagman. <laughs> Plagman went hard into the brick wall, limping a little bit as he goes back. Wow. So Cleveland stays live. It's 0-2 yet. Again, Jesse Van Overbeck nursing a hamstring, so I don't expect him to go 100% on something if Cleveland should shoot the gap. 1-2 the count. Hugged him high and tight. Two and two. Look at the board. Lakers now have seven hits. Nothing to show for it. That's the definition of scattering hits. Oh, Phil Johnson wins the battle for the slowest throw over to first base. I don't know what he did. He gave a hand signal to his catcher. That one's hammered down the third baseline, and it's going to go for... A single, again, Van Overbeck. He, he rounded it fairly hard, but he's not able to go full speed. Matt Stevenson now batting. Pinch hitter Matt Stevenson for Dawson Nome. Still working that other role, aren't you, where you're helping me? <laughs> No, no, no. Matt 
Well, while we have a moment, why don't we take a moment to uh, thank another one of our sponsors bringing you coverage of the State Amateur Tournament, Horizon Health. At Horizon Health, they're focused on what's real and what's rural. With advanced technology and a personal touch, they deliver medical, dental, and behavioral health care that's open to everyone. And, of course, our global sponsor, Farmers Union Insurance. For more than 65 years, they have been insuring a brighter tomorrow by investing in the rural communities while protecting what matters to you. So Dawson Nome is at the plate after they rethought the situation. And guess who's on deck? <laughs> yeah, and I wondered if he'd hit for pits. There's the pitch. That one's high and in for ball one. In his last at bat, Noam had the line drive out to left field for base hit. First one of the day, he's one for three. Takes that pitch inside and low for ball two. Two and oh the count. Runners on first and second. Van Overbeck at second. Cleveland at first. Here's the pitch. Drops oh. down. Get Throws a get-me-over fastball. It's a good one to tattoo. Oh, he Tattooed did that, that one. one. And it gets down. And Aaron was doing everything he could to sell that as a routine yeah. fly ball, and Van Overbeck was having nothing to do with it. So the kid, Dawson Nome, with two hits in probably his first state tournament game at the amateur level, off fresh off the uh, Legion State Tournament that Lake Norton Badger. There might be a pitching change here because it's not Brad Barcher going to the mound alone. The whole team is coming out <laughs> to help him out they, if he has to They fall might in. be talking strategy. They you are. Know, <laughs> probably play normal, normal depth up the middle. Corners are up. So Matt Stevenson will be the pinch hitter for Noah Pitts. Tell me about Matt Stevenson besides his batting average. What do they list him at? Uh, Stevenson. Your now no, it's Kale. 375 on the season. Matt is 51 years old, still doing it. I don't know that he steps on the mound much anymore. He used to be a fireballer. Um, but he's always been able to hit. Last year in a district tournament game, he and his son both hit home runs. Nice. Yeah. Nice moment for that family. First pitch to Stevenson misses for ball one. No place to put him. I'm going to guess you can see a get-me-over fastball right here. He doesn't want to fall down in the count 2-0. Well, it's a curveball. A lot of respect when you throw a curveball. <laughs> if Stevenson gets on, I would expect him to be lifted in favor of a pinch runner. Probably Grayson Flory. Possibly, I should say. I it's don't know what the plan familiar. is, but yeah, he's a Clark trader. Uh, Stevenson, though, probably not going to go to left field. Toulson could go to the outfield, and Stevenson could possibly go to first. They have options. Stevenson used to play uh, some outfield when he wasn't pitching, played first and second also back in the day. Here's the pitch. Got the pitch he wanted. This could be trouble. Had they gone to second, they probably could have turned it. So it's an RBI ground out fielder's choice. Kitchens to Schmidt to retire Cleveland, but Van Overbeck scores. Runners on first and second. That's Dawson Nome at second. J.D. Kirshner going to be the pinch runner, perhaps. Yeah. Well, Stevenson got the job done. He got him off the schneid. Yeah. 
And the way Mick, Tool Mick Toulson will be your batter coming to the plate, if he turns on one, it'll score one. Kirchner speed, and depends, depending on where he places this, this could, think, this could be a two-run stroke. Kirshner wearing the oven mitt on his left hand. One and one. Here's the pitch. Lined pitch. into right center field. It's going to get down. And bobbled and by Inquist. Score a run. And J.D. Kirshner's chugging into second. He's going to move up on the mishandled ball out in right field. So it's going to be an RBI single with an error that allows the runner to move up. Yes. And Toulson didn't try to turn on that one quite as much as the others. Just wanted to put it in play, and it's got dividends for the Lakers. Tony Soup Campbell is going to pinch hit for Kevin Crum. And Soup is a second baseman yep. by trade. Yeah, I am curious if they'll put Kirshner out on the field or if they'll lift him in favor of somebody else. He played second in the district tournament when he wasn't pitching. Owen won the, the count to Soup. Here's the pitch. He slaps it down the first <gasps> baseline. Oh. oh. Called foul by the first base ump. Very close. Be in, you should have a camera on the. We do have on one the on, the on the base looking straight up. Straight up. up. <laughs> All right, you know I'll try by next yeah, year. Yeah, right. But we did have the one on the right field line. <laughs> the right field foul line would have been beautiful there to see that one coming in. <laughs> well, well, we'll blame Cole out in the truck. <laughs> we actually contemplated bringing in a second joystick and running one person on the three cameras on the outfield and one on the ones here on the grandstand. Oh, wow. We shortened up. We were missing some space. On to the count to Soup. Calls time, steps out. Boy, he turned on that one, though, didn't he? Sure did. Four to two now the score, by the way. In case you've lost track, here's the pitch. It plunked him. And he leaned into it something fierce. And he's awarded first base. Here it is. Oh, boy. He did. Lean in I that. thought it was close to no, the zone. No. <laughs> the beauty of this is we get to see what Phil Johnson saw and why he's reacting yeah. the way he is. Some people would say, well, Phil's overreacting. He plunked the guy. No. <laughs> he threw that elbow yeah. in from left field. <laughs> so bases are loaded for Trevor Thuey. Thuey is one for three on the day. Grounded out to second, lined a single into center, and struck out swinging. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Big moment here. Base hit might score two. Called strike. Kitchen's playing very deep out there at shortstop. He's got a couple feet on the grass right now. He'll probably step in onto the infield. Chopper on the infield. Schmidt is up with it, flips it to second, and gets Campbell on the fielder's choice. So that's going to retire the side. There were two runs on four hits. There were no errors and three men left on base. We'll head into the bottom of the eighth. Raptors coming to bat, leading 4-2 when we come back in a minute. Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour are your 100% locally owned team of agronomy experts. We offer Agronomy 365, which provides info in real time to make decisions that result in better, more profitable farming. We know you and your operation with service beyond compare. Get a jump on spring planning with Agronomy Plus in Mitchell, Rock Creek and Howard, and Valley Station in Armour. We are ag done right, the American way. Bank West is rooted in South Dakota. Committed to local success. Just like you. We're all connected. 
in South Dakota for South Dakota. Convenient, connected, committed. Bank West. CNB is proud to support our local farmers. Rooted in agriculture, we are committed to our customers. You can shop local with CNB, your John Deere dealer, providing you with new and used equipment, parts on hand, and service all year round. Our entire inventory is available to you online at DeerEquipment.com. CNB, proud to be your local John Deere dealer. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. And Soup. Error. Soup is going to miss that one. Tony Campbell just into the game. That one was popped up. Wind was playing with it a little bit. And it's going to catch some turf. And as you heard, that's going to be an error. That'll bring Drew Kitchens to the plate. There are two errors on the top and two errors on the bottom. They got him oh. picked. One, three, six, one, four. And he's safe. You got to tag him. Boy. Well, the one thing that Nikolai did wrong there is he was pushing the the runner forward too long. Yes, Gotta always push him it. back. Yep. It's a great point. We're going to credit him with a stolen base, but <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> interesting, interesting. I thought Nikolai actually was going to be able to slap the tag on him right away when he got the ball over there at f uh, near first. S took a swing and missed, and then pushed him and pushed him and pushed him and got it to Tony Campbell, and, and it was a tough throw to handle. Bert Toulson has been tossed. That's crazy. Bert hugs the first base coach. Is that Doug Sudbeck? It is. That that scares me because I there's some unconfirmed news circulating about different things and Bert's got to leave the park right we saw that last night in the late game well, now we got two guys writing love letters uh oh somebody's in trouble over at third <laughs> okay. oh. you just get into a spot <laughs> he's like gotta go Well, after all's been said and done, we have a runner that reached on an error, should have been picked off. He ends up standing on second base. Nobody down, and the batter is Drew Kitchens. Two for two on the day, been on base all four times. Hit by pitch two other times. McToolson playing way shallow, expecting a bunt. Shows it and pulls back and gets hit by a pitch. And there was an appeal to ask if he had offered, and he did not. And he's even got that guard down his tricep where it's covering part of his elbow. So with runners on first and second, Peyton Nash steps up. He's the center fielder, fleet of foot. He is one for three on the day. Also has a sacrifice bunt. Toulson again, very shallow, expecting the bunt. Boy, if you're Lake Norton, you really need a shutdown inning, and it isn't looking great right now. 
Arbach throws to Tony Campbell covering first on the sacrifice bunt. The good thing Tony has all 5'8 to work with there because <laughs> it was a little bit high. It was a rising throw. <laughs> Matt Stevenson now the acting manager with Burt Toulson having been ejected. He comes out to the mound to talk things over. See if they're going to make a move. Coming into the heart of the order, Jason Schmidt will be the next batter. He's three for three on the day. Kirchner would be the likely guy early. They're going to put Schmidt on. Well, they're going to intentionally walk him and pitch to Phil Johnson with one away. Which From mean, a baseball perspective, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Phil Johnson, that's bulletin board material. You know, you walk somebody, it's like, okay, I'll show you. <laughs> Schmidt's like, thank you for the respect. Yeah. And Phil Johnson's, as Brock said. Ooh. Norton really needs him to ground into a double play right here. They need to keep him on the infield. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think he was trying to do with that swing? I think something over Vernity or Porter on, or on Sioux the Falls. Or Sioux Falls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Phil again, the pitcher record here for Dim McEmory trying to help his own cause by padding the lead. Follows this one back, and it's off the awning. And then you get to hear it roll off. Yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty gentle. <laughs> oh, and to the count. Backdoor curveball, I'll bet. Nope. <gasps> Not a good pitch. Up in the count, 0-2. And Phil Johnson over on firsts just has recorded a two-run single to kind of give himself his own little insurance policy in this game. As Brock had said, he is the pitcher on record for the Raptors. Schmidt is on third. And uh, they're going to lift Phil for a courtesy runner. It's not courtesy. It's a pinch runner. So that will okay. end Phil's day. Close the book on him as a pitcher. Number 12, I believe. 18. Bryce Smart. It's going to be your pinch runner. Coming to the plate, this is Sam Pischke. Pischke is two for four on the day for the Raptors. With only one out, you've got Schmidt over on second or on third. This could become a, this still an opportunity for the Raptors. Arbach comes set. Runners on the corners. First pitch to Pisky on the way. There goes the runner. Throw to third directly Don't and like into re left field. And Kirshner nails him at third. So they do score a run. I don't know what the pitch was. Um, don't either. 1-0. So it was a ball. How many errors this inning? Still recording. Yeah, I'm struggling, I'm riding the struggle bus here. Yeah, this one has gotten wild here in the the whole inning, the eighth inning. It's Jeez. been a wild inning. Anytime you're talking about an ejection of Burt Toulson, you know something's a little off. So in this inning, there are two errors. 
that have led to a three-run outburst. Bases are now empty. But at this point in the game, you'll gladly trade a run for an out if yeah. you're trying to extend your lead. Actually extend out to the biggest lead of the game. Yeah. Yeah, it was four to excuse me, four to two coming into the bottom of the eighth here. Now it's seven to two. Ball outside. Three and two the count. Pisky's two for four on the day. Payoff pitch on its way. Fouled off. Mm. Well, we'll do her again here. I looked down in the middle of the fourth, and I thought, man, this game's clipping right along. Now we're at the two-hour and 20-minute mark, and yeah. it's kind of ground to a halt. That's, That's fair, fair ball. McToolson down on the knee, flips it to Nikolai Arbach for out number three. That's going to retire the side, but not before Dimmick Emery comes up with three runs on one hit. There were two errors, and nobody left on base. We'll head into the top of the ninth. It's do-or-die time now for the Lake Norton Lakers. Trailing 7-2. to two. We'll be back in a minute. Live Ticket TV continues to grow and bring you more sports coverage than ever before. And now, Live Ticket TV is happy to announce their partnership into college athletics with Dakota Wesleyan University. That's right, Tiger Nation, Live Ticket TV, and DWU have teamed up to bring you coverage of all home sporting activities for the Tigers. If you'd like to advertise during these sporting events, give Live Ticket TV a call. Dakota Wesleyan University Sports, now on Live Ticket TV. BNS Services LLC is your locally owned repair service center. We specialize in full service automotive, semi trailer, and small engine repair, along with tire services. Repair services range from a simple oil change to sharpening mower blades to a more complicated electrical diagnosis. Located at 38058 South Coda Highway 34, look for us on the hill heading west out of town. Phone Cody Barber 605 350 4293 and Arian Schooler 605 770 9398. BNS Services LLC is a proud sponsor of Westington Springs Spartans. Athletic. Dimmick Cheese has been. And we're back here at Catwell Park. Landon Waddell completing his warm up tosses. He will be on in relief of Phil Johnson trying to close things out for the Dimmick Emery Raptors here. But Phil Johnson delivered a big blow in the last inning. A couple of RBIs on a line drive out to center field. They lifted him in favor of a pinch runner. And now they've lifted that pinch runner in favor of the hard throwing. Landon Waddell. Mm -hmm. Also, he keeps a mean scoreboard. Last <laughs> night he was up here in the booth running the board. Leading off is Jackson Nome. Top of the order for Lake Norton. If they're going to get things going, this is a good place to start. First ball, first pitch is spiked for a uh, 55 foot ball. Nerves, probably. First state amateur baseball appearance. First pitch ever. Playing on the home field, though. And there's a ball. I was mentioning that it looked like Inquist was throwing out in right field as though he could come in in relief if anything gets hairy here. They've got some options. It's good to have everybody ready to roll. Waddell has different ideas in mind. He'd like to just close things out and call her a day. That was a strike. Here's the 2-1. And that one misses just off the corner. It was very close. Probably the hardest throwing pitcher of the day so far. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the 3-1, and that misses, ball four. Well, that's a good start if you're Lake Norton. Jesse Van Overbeck working his way to the plate now. First pitch from Waddell misses outside. Just as in the early portion of the game, here in the late portion, Waddell struggling like Johnson did to find the strike zone, dial in. Comes set with a very closed approach. Ball lifted out into center field. That's right at Nash. Couple steps to his left and he Hauls it in. Can of corn. Yes, sir. Cameron Thuey now the batter. He is one for four on the day. Last inning, the Lake Norton Lakers strung four hits together to put a couple runs on the board. Trying to find that magic again. First pitch to Thuey misses high. One misses low and away. Two and all the count. Waddell been pitching down in the count to the first three batters he's seen. Here's the pitch. And there's a called strike. The novelty of your first state tournament appearance is wearing off and you're just settling in. Someone misses low and away. Skipped in there. Nice play by Plagman to backhand it. Here's the pitch. A big swing and a miss. Runs the count full. Three, two, and one on the board. Three and two with one down. And a swing and a miss. And Lake Norton now is down to their final out. Josh Cleveland, the cleanup hitter, one for four on the day, steps up to the dish. Dawson Nome waits on deck. Nome has had a couple line drive hits to left in his last two at bats. Hoping to get another chance. And they're gonna give him second base. That's gonna be defensive indifference. Not a stolen base. One and all the count. Here's the pitch. One and one the count now. If they're going to give it to you, you might as well move take up it. and yeah. take away the short out. Chopper on the infield, and that's Kitchens. He <laughs> bobbles it 14 <laughs> times and not able to come up with it. It wasn't an easy play. No. But uh, it is going to be an error. I so. just realized something as you're making the call. If I look down the line, there's like four eyeballs looking down here. Oh. Going, <laughs> hit her air, hit her air. <laughs> so Dawson Nome is up with another opportunity to add to his pretty He's got a nice doggone impressive day. Two hits in a row for two, or uh, Dawson. Right. Yeah, he's putting it together. Just another game, right? Mm-hmm. Here's the pitch. Probably facing a little bit better velocity than he saw in most Legion fields. 2-0 and the count. Waddell now set to deliver his 19th pitch of the inning. 
And there's a call. It's timeout by the batter. Waddell, 7 out of 18 for strikes. 39% clip so far. Been close a few yeah. times, but he started out by spiking a couple. This ball fouled into the territory over on the first base side. He'd been nibbling. Two and one the count with two down runners on the corners. Here's the pitch. And that's right down Broadway, a swing and a miss. Good cut. He was right on it. Two and two now the count with two down. And they say that he swung, and that's going to do it. Lake Norton goes down to the Dimmick Emery Raptors. The Raptors have punched their tickets for the next round. Going to get the. Uh, do we call the next round here? Sweet 16? I think if we do, we're going to get sued. Oh, by, that's uh, right. A that certain right. college, a certain collegiate organization who doesn't know the difference between men and women. <laughs> <laughs> So Phil Johnson gets the win on the mound, and Jordan Johnson goes down in defeat on the mound. Uh, pretty well played ball game, generally speaking. Dimmick Emery came out with hot sticks, had a lot of hits early. They ended up with 12 on the day. The tallies on the board, Lake Norton Lakers, two runs on 10 hits. Most of those came late. They scattered for a while and then, and then uh, had four in the eighth inning. They committed three errors. The Dimmick Emery Raptors, seven runs on 12 hits. They committed three errors. Most of those came very late in the game. I'll get you some numbers here. Drew Kitchens, two for two with three runs scored. He was hit by a pitch three times. Peyton Nash, one for three on the day. Jason Schmidt, three for three with three runs. I'm sorry, two runs scored and three RBIs also walked once. Phil Johnson, two for five with two big RBIs in the bottom of the eighth. Sam Pischke, two for five with a, an RBI. Josh Inquist, one for three with a base on balls also. And uh, Aaron, he was one for four with two runs scored. On the uh, Lake Norton side of things, Jackson Nome, one for three with a base on balls. Jesse Van Overbeck, one for five with a run scored. Cameron Thuey, one for five. Josh Cleveland, one for five. Dawson Nome, two for five with a run scored. Noah Pitts, one for three. Matt Stevenson with an RBI. Mick Toulson, one for four with an RBI. Kevin Crum, one for three. Trevor Thuey, one for four. Pitchers, again, Jordan Johnson started for Lake Norton and went three and two thirds. Uh, gave up four runs, all were earned. Walked one, didn't strike out anybody, surrendered eight hits. No, Nikolai Arbach in four and a third innings of relief. Scattered four hits, three runs, only one was earned. And gave a free pass in the, by way of a base on balls and struck out one. Um, Jordan Johnson hit one batter, Nikolai Arbach hit two. Phil Johnson in, in the victory, eight innings pitch, ten runs, two I'm sorry, 10 hits, two runs, both earned, seven strikeouts, no bases on balls. And Landon Waddell, Waddell sorry, comes in, in relief, pitches one inning, strikes out two, and walks one. Phil Johnson threw 127 pitches, Waddell threw 21. Nikolai Arbach threw 58, 44 were strikes. Incidentally, Jordan Johnson threw 67, 42 of which were strikes. So that's going to do it for the first game here. That's the third game of the tournament so far after last night's action. We will be back with the call in the next game. It's going to feature the Castlewood Ravens, also from the Eastern Dakota League, versus the Tabor Bluebirds, who made a deep run last year, and they're looking to try to do the same thing this year. A uh, good, young, upstart team. I believe they said in the preview show, it's the revenge tour. For the bluebird. Ah, <laughs> I gotcha. Well, <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see which bird is more, more uh, is fiercer, <laughs> the raven or the bluebird. <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes once the uh, field is ready to roll. Change your video player, and we'll be back with continuing action here in the first round. <laughs> 